Hey, this is Chase Sexton. You're listening to the Moto X Pod Show. What's up, you guys? Jeremy McGrath here. You are listening to Moto X Pod Show. Welcome back. It's time for another Vital MX Moto X Pod show presented by Race Tech and Yamaha Motor USA. Indy was this past weekend, and Jet Jet wins another one. Jesus, Jet wins another one. I think we're going to be saying that a lot in the next few months and few years. Uh, Cameron McAdoo also gets a win in the Triple Crown. And then on the GNCC side, if you guys pay attention, round three, uh, FMF KTM's uh, Johnny Greer, I think is how you say his last name. He's won three in a row. Uh, it's pretty impressive in the GNCC class. I need to get Johnny in touch with Johnny, get him on the class and the uh, on the show. But speaking of the GNCC, we're gonna have WXC XC rider from Rockstar Husky Corey Steed on tonight. We've never had her on, so it'll be a first time. Really looking forward to it. She was also on the women's ISDE team that won the world championship this last year. Then we're gonna have Team Green's Drew Adams coming off of. Uh, Freestone Spring Classic, where he won a couple classes. He won Supercross Futures in Daytona. So looking forward to talking to Drew. And we'll close the thing out by doing a check-in with Brandon Hartraft. He's part of Alpha Motocross Dynamics. Him and Cooper Webb started that together. So we want to see how he's doing. We want to see what's going on with Alpha Motocross Dynamics. And I asked him to bring three things that stood out to him so far in this season of Supercross. So he told me he had a few things to talk about, so that should be fun. We haven't talked to Brandon in a while. You guys may, re- I'm sure, remember. Very, very significant back injury. Very, very lucky to not be pe- paralyzed. A uh, long recovery time, but Brandon has decided, obviously, to step away from racing professionally. So, yeah, we'll, we'll check in with him, see how life's going. In studio, working the cameras, YouTube chat, Scotty Thompson. What's up, Scotty? Oh, what's going on, man? Chat's already... Chad's already doing their thing. It's going to be, the, it's, we're going to miss TJ a little bit, but it, I think well, that the guy that's supposed to be in that seat, that's, uh, that we, yeah, he's, he's replaced. I've he's already gone. forgot about him. Yeah. yeah we're moving yeah. on. <laughs> we are moving on. Uh, Jeremy Huddleston's back in TJ's chair. So um, it's not a hard chair to fill. <laughs> Very small shoes to fill. You well, should be fine. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for having me back, and uh, yeah. thank you for dinner. TJ sure did uh, miss out. He on missed the one. pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, no, man, you can't order food because we never order food. And I was like, hey, I guess we'll order food. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't know who. I don't know who you were doing it in spite of, but it. it, it I'm, I ate the pizza. So. I mean, it really wasn't to, in, to spite anybody. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of funny because TJ's bro. bummed don't about lie. it, but I was just like, yeah, pizza actually sounds good. Let's get some pizza. So, uh, yeah, got some pizza. All right, Indy Supercross coming on. As I've already said, Jet. Triple Crown, one, one, one. You know, in the past, we're like, oh, Jet struggles with Triple Crowns. Uh, Maybe at the beginning of the year, Jet, quote, unquote, struggled in uh, the mud. I don't think Jet really struggles at anything. Scotty, I think we've been saying this for weeks. Jet's just getting ready to go on a run. It just is what it is. Uh, It it It, sucks. It it doesn't doesn't suck that he's winning. It sucks for the sport if he's by far the best guy. But, you know, okay, there's there's a couple of avenues to go down there. The first one, briefly, is, yeah, Jeremy McGrath did that, too, and it transitioned the, trans, transitioned the sport to, you know, transcended the sport. That's the word I wanted. Okay. It transcended the sport to another level, so maybe we're on the cusp of that happening again. Yeah. Um, on As far as the other part, though, it's, it's kind of interesting. I know, technically, we haven't... Maybe you can argue that we haven't seen the best version of all the guys, you know, Chase, a new bike, Eli, so on and so forth. Um, That being said, he's kind of gone to every element that those guys excel on and gotten a win. Roxon's good at Indy in those ruts and triple ground kind of thing. He beat him there, you know. He beat Tomac in Daytona. He's... He's not let Cooper do the Coop thing at the end of the race like five times. At West Coast, when Anderson got behind him, when Anderson's strong there, he's beaten him. So, like, uh, yeah, the a lot of boxes have been checked, and um, I think that somebody can challenge him. I, you know, 
the, some of the guys get better. At but times, yes. But I, yeah, I think overall. Well, first of all, this race tech open discussion is brought to you by Race Tech. Should have started with that. The, Should have opened the open discussion. We're yeah. saying is the Race Tech open discussion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you guys ride, <laughs> you have suspension. Check out racetech.com. Find your local service center. Let them help you service your suspension, change the fluids. Maybe you need to, you know, go up a spring rate. Talk to your local tech. He's probably at the local track when you're riding, at least at the races. Go get to know the guy. You know, go use Race Tech. Racetech.com. Find that out. Uh, Race Tech Gold Valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance and increased traction. All Race Tech products are 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. It's really important to us here in the USA. To support our, U- our U.S. customer or uh, companies, and Race Tech's been involved with the sport for a long time. They've supported our show, so go re- uh, support racetech.com. Anyway, someone said, Sorry. someone said you look like Damon Bradshaw with your Yamaha polo. I think I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, Yamaha, buddy, and Blue Crew. Racing <laughs> racing the Blue Crew in two weeks at the last qualifier didn't, in Too bad you didn't get this speed. I yeah. passed him. <laughs> I, pa- I did. I passed him. What are you talking about? So... Passing him, blowing up a, or re- destroying his bike. Man, that was a long time ago. I passed him <laughs> People recently. People don't forget. <laughs> yeah, I passed him recently. But anyway, um, yeah, the jet thing, it's kind of, it's its scary. And I, I want to talk about, well, get, let's get your thoughts real quick. Since we're talking about jet mm-hmm. and, and Indy in general, but jet, I mean, he's going he's to he's be difficult to beat on a regular basis. Yeah. Isn't it kind of crazy? Like uh, he knew Chase was coming and he was like, hey, I got to turn it up in that third main and catch Kenny and pass him. He did that just by, just yeah. by saying, hey, you know what? I got to go. And he just made it happen within a lap. Yeah, and I feel uh, like it was fairly, I, I want to say the word easy. Yeah. That that might be, like other writers might not like that, but it seemed easy, sort of just like at Daytona when he passed Chase and Eli. And it was just like, it's all right, time to go. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be scary whenever, yeah. like, if he, like, truly, truly has this all figured out, it's scary for the so rest of the field. Let's talk about this real quick. Right. We, we've heard the... So McGrath with 72 wins. Will Jet get there? And Jet's kind of made some kind of comment at the beginning of the season. Got people riled up. He's only got 67 to go. Okay, but, <laughs> but listen, uh, he's had five wins so far this year. There's seven races left. How many of those seven races left, Scotty, does he win? Four. So that'd be nine wins. Jeremy? I think I'm at the degree. Four. Okay, so, so we'll say nine. We had a couple mutters. Probably could have won 10 races. Right. Let's say he averages 10 wins a year. That'd be crazy. In seven years, he'll probably still be around. Right. It's not that unlikely that he could break that record. Like, that. What with what we're seeing, I don't feel like it's that far out of, like, a realistic opportunity, possibility, barring injuries. Yeah, especially, like... That he with- could easily... When the, the guys, like, right now start going away, Eli... And Cooper, start, he's, he's going to have to do is getting older. Yeah, he, I think he he's got at least six years of dealing with Chase. Yeah, and, and, and I okay. think I think Chase. I would, what I would like to see is I, I think it's going to be kind of like the the Villapoto Dungey scenario mm-hmm. with Jet and Chase. I hope so. Yeah, what's going to have to happen? It's not is, unrealistic in my eyes though that that could happen. Yeah. Yeah, what's going to have to happen is Sexton's got to get that bike figured out. Yeah, and he's got to start stringing something along before we have another. You know, six, seven years of Jed dominating, and I'm not saying that you know Chase is going to stay on there for his, you know next six years with KTM. I don't. I'm not very confident that Chase wants to stick around six more years. Yeah, I mean, he's got to figure it out, regardless of what bike he's on. Yeah, he's got to figure it out. Or it's going to be a long career. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really think we see Chase for another six for six more years. I, I, I don't. Really, I, I very much after thinking about this today think. It's very, I, I would go 60, 40, 60% jet breaks that McGrath record. <laughs> that's yeah, a hot well, take. Because yeah, if you think about it, I'm <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's how I feel today. That's a hot take. Yeah, because I did the math like, okay, he got, he's 20 years old. He's got to win at least a minimum of seven races a year for the, for the next 10 years to either tie the record. Or 10 he, races for seven years. Yeah, exactly. Or, or maybe he wins, you know, maybe next year he wins 12 races. Yeah. So, uh, other than I mean, uh, like, McGrath? I hope that isn't the case. But I'm starting to get this. Not I want to say I, can't, I want everything I say sounds like it's negative against Jet, but it's not specifically against Jet. Like I don't like the guy, but there's this negative feeling within me that he's going to just start dominating, and I'm going to be like, "This sucks." Well, so when you when you go back and you watch, I don't know if you do this often, but if you ever go back and watch like an old 
let's say 96, 98, 99, 95 Supercross, do you like, is it, do you, do you not like it because when you knew McGrath was going to win or was it cool to see? I, I think we've had this era of anybody can win for like 10 plus years now. And I think that we're, we're going into uh, another, it'll be another thing of who's going to, who's going to beat jet. And I, I, I would I would rather the the everybody has a chance to win, but mm-hmm. Me too. I, I think we've had that for a while, so maybe a change of pace would kind of be nice. Mm. I just to, I don't you think I'm just trying to I'm trying to talk you be, off the off the yeah, but what kind of change of pace? Ledge, Where would man? anybody go? I'm really glad this guy wins every single week. No, yeah. no, I'm when, saying, I love McGrath, but when he was winning every week, I was like, the, the, bro, this is uh, clearly the, he's going to win. Come he might start in. dead last and he's going to win. I don't think Jet's going to do that necessarily. This field is deeper in my opinion than that. Well, that would but, be the thrill to you know ahead, to, Jeff, to see him come back or you know like all right, who's gonna who's gonna who's like, gonna try to who's gonna get close to I him want, tonight? I want at least three guys that can legitimately win every week. Yeah. I don't want. Three guys that no, they I would, might be able to win, but more than likely Jets going to win. I don't want I, that. I would I be interested to uh, hear what Lewis has, the captain of the ship, has to say about. Well, he's that. probably listening. He said he was going to listen, so he might I'm chime with, in. But I'm with I'm with Lewis. I'm going to hop on that ship. I think Chase gives him more of a run of his money than. I don't think he's just going to let him run away. No, Chase this is not going to just let him run away. This Chase season, is maybe. definitely not comfortable this year, and I don't think he's completely happy. But I don't think Chase sticks around for those next six or seven years. He's twenty. Three. I realize that, but I just trust. I I don't know, man. I don't think he's gonna. He might have other plans. Hmm. Are you trying? Oh, are you trying to say something? Mm-mm. I'm not trying to say shit. <laughs> I got I got I got yeah, go ahead. take for you. All right, so you know how we had the greats, we had the whole shot devices, we have uh, a minimum set of whoops, we have no dragon backs. Uh, these guys on FI, these guys have like uh, the rev limiters for their starts. If you think about it, McGrath had zero of that. Right. And, uh, and Grath, McGrath was the coolest guy on the planet. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big McGrath fan, so I'm kind of like yeah. sticking up for him. I was like, do you think his record could be even more if he had at least half of those things? Whole shot device, FI. Uh, you could go either way. But everybody maybe, would have but then you, But yeah. then maybe Emig and those other guys got better starts and raced with them more. So, uh, who yeah. I, I don't know. I think I think it, I think it. those things have tightened it up. Right. Where there are guys that maybe not quite as much talent, but they get a little bit better start or they, right. or they don't make as many mistakes. So, well, that was the thing. Yeah. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say the skill that McGrath had mm. was so far above that. If the technology had evened it up some, that maybe he doesn't have the 72 wins. I got you. Maybe he has only 71. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then there, there, <laughs> was joking. there were a lot, <laughs> they were a lot more prone to mistakes back then. Like you, yeah. It was real easy to. Is it they're riding two strokes, man, and like they on like curbs, so like there was a chance for slipping out in the corners more, and it's just it's really not. I don't feel like it's even the same kind of thing. It's just now it's a battle of like attrition and and uh, stamina and um, like mindset. Right back then, it was just who who could who could screw up the lace. <laughs> well, and there was some of that. You just said mindset. So McGrath has admitted like he would come to line going, "I know I'm going to win tonight." Yeah, like, I know. And I, I think that Jet's probably getting there. Yeah. I don't so. know if he's there yet. I, I mean, I, I don't know what he's thinking, but he's definitely knows in the back of his mind, he's like, yeah, I'm better than these guys. I think he knows right now he's better. Because like, if you go back and listen to it, one of his interviews yeah. from over the summer, he's like, it's, he said it was like round like four. He goes, hey, I think I can string this along. Yeah. And now I think he's figuring it out. He could probably string these along. But what's even bigger than that to me is if in the back of Coop's mind or Eli's mind or Chase, and I'm not saying it is, but if they're like, yeah, I don't know if I can beat this guy. Well, yeah. then you're beat, right? right? Exactly. So if Jet keeps this up and he gets in those guys' head a little bit, does that affect their performance? And probably so. Yeah, I don't think I know the they, They're not going to admit that. And it may not even be the case yet. If he keeps winning, I don't see how it doesn't become a factor. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Yamaha Motor USA, if you guys are watching right now, got my nice little Yamaha... Pullover, is that what you could call the shirt? Yes, pullover. Pullover shirt, thank you, to Yamaha. But a uh, reputation for dominance, it doesn't happen overnight. It's built over decades. The YZ story is 50 years of iconic machines and groundbreaking innovations. Yamaha's new 50th anniversary edition YZs pay tribute to a half century of championship winning performance wrapped in stunning retro style. So check them out at Yamaha Motors USA, uh, or uh, yeah, uh, uh, Yamaha Motorsports.com. Sorry about that. Go to your local dealership, check out the Yamahas. Uh, if you guys are in, I guess, Central California, wherever Bakersfield is, not this weekend, but the following is the Loretta's qualifier. I'll be out there with Michael Lindsay. We're going to do that area qualifier. So, yeah, come out to 
think it's Kern MX or something like that. If you guys are in there, come check it out. Uh, be riding a Yamaha 450, it sounds like. Cool. Uh, yeah. I'm wow, cool. that was very enthusiastic. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking, cool, to, <laughs> I'm looking to get me a YZ450. I think you should. I think I should. I do think you should. Triple crowns. Like them? Against them? I still like them. Uh, I do agree with the Mathis take that we need to do something where the third one matters, even if yeah. you have... Like those guys. Sometimes do, it does, though. I like mean, maybe there should. Uh, he he said something about like bonus points for first, second, third. So when McAdoo is running third or fourth, you go well. I can get extra point or two if I take third. Well, so would they, it be an extra point or would it be an like? Would you be? Could you be negative two going into the third round? So let's say you go because how would you, you don't want to? It, it's an it's an Olympic style scoring. You want the lowest score. Well, I think overall points once they point give you points at the end of the night. Like oh, they you, get, for a, you get you like would a, get. A like, bonus so, hey, point. if you get third, maybe you get a bonus point or whatever. So oh. you got to give them some kind of incentive to go, all right, I'm not going to just sit back, which is kind of what the point is, which either regardless, I like the triple crowns. I like having them, the, the change up. Uh, I, I think they're fun. They're cool. Uh, Jeremy, what do you think oh, about triple crowns? I know, you got I tired like of them? them. I, no, I like them. seen a couple of them, I, I would assume. Yeah, I like them. Um, I think it makes it interesting, kind of get do away with the heat races. Yeah. And uh, the LCQs kind of get that out of the way. You kind of go straight into the show and – I mean, not taking away, like, the heat races are not part of the show, but you kind of get down to the nitty-gritty, and it's game on. Right I away. also, playing fantasy, like knowing that I have all eight riders in. Yeah. That yeah. helps. But, uh, Scotty, uh, um, Triple Crowns, are you in or out or more or less? Yeah, I, I like them. Um, I don't know. Anything you would change? I wouldn't say less. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say more either. I, I The only thing that I would change would be, the, the, I mean, yeah, I guess to, to somehow make it interesting – at the at the last one where it, like it actually counts for something, yeah. um, where you can't lay back. Yeah, and I think that it needs to be you know a different a different style of track. It needs to it needs to be one that's made for like re- like more one eighties, made for passing, like maybe not as technical, just kind of more of those flat out speed tracks, like a super motocross seat. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but just just not so much technical stuff that why. So, cause just because it's shorter motos and uh, it, it would provide for more passing, better racing. That way, you don't have these guys just uh, like uh, like Jeremy made a good point before the show. He says, I think he said slot car racing, where you just kind of you get stuck in this this place, and then you, there's not really a whole lot you can do. Yeah. So, I would just say I'm like have them do them at more hard packed stadiums where it can be faster, more like kind of like scrubbing and get on the inside of other guys, kind of racing rather than more the, and like a battle of attrition. Hey, do you think uh, like a, a staggered start? It could, uh, somebody make a brought difference? that up. I think that was a question on the Pulp Review Show where somebody said like maybe, and I don't remember if it was for Triple Crown or just in general, but I think it was, just I, in general. I think it was Triple like, ha, like have a pit stop, yeah, force pit stop, and then all the, just tighten everybody up. Yeah, it's kind of But like, then all the lappers go back behind. Like if, if there's, you know, guys in the middle of the field, everybody goes back behind the leader. So you're back in your one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through. Right. What if it's but, did like a Joker lane? Yeah. I was, oh, I was about to, I was literally about to say <laughs> I don't feel like the Joker lane worked. I mean, it, and it was then drama. Then you're taking up, a, then you got to have a, that's a wasted area of the, the yeah. stadium. Every lap. Basically. Just do it. Just make it to where you have to, you don't even have to make it much. Just make it where you have to like go around a cone on the start or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of lame for yeah. a sport that we're trying to make an elite sport. Oh, make the, let's do a, gotta, do a figure eight. The mechanic holds Everybody their, has to do a figure eight. <laughs> mechanic holds their bike and you got to do four why dizzy do, bats. Okay. Why don't we do this? <laughs> uh, the, the rider has to switch out with the mechanic one lap. Yeah. The mechanic has to do a lap. Uh, oh. Buddy race. Couples race. The, the, yeah, the this, last those, I don't like those ideas. This, those are dumb. This I'm new not, era, is all, they all have fiancés and wives. Like, stuff, so I don't remember race. how many triple crowns we have this year, but I feel like it's three, been a, right? Okay, I, it's triple been a, it's crowns? been an yeah, but I don't think that means there's only three triple crowns. Maybe there is. There's always only been three of them. Okay, uh-huh. well, I know it's been an odd number. So my point is that means one coast gets an extra one. I've always said I feel like one of them should be a showdown. So, yeah. So then each coast the, gets one by themselves, and the then final two, round. That's fine. I would be okay with that. Yeah. I don't know if people would want the champ, the finals, like as a triple crown, but. Whatever. I feel like it should be a showdown. One of them. Yeah. A central like Dallas, Arlington, you know, St. Louis, a, a more neutral. Not that it really it's matters. It's crazy to me that the, the East-West showdown is in East Rutherford. Like, yeah. Let's like make the West Coast more, guys. It is, should be a neutral, like a Dallas, a St. Louis. Yeah. Let's make the West Coast but guys drive again, as far as they possibly well, can. That's for the privateers, I guess. But like the factory guys, for the most part, 
they're either all private, on the East Coast or all on the West Coast. Matter. So they're doing that. Every, well, they do. I don't. I don't disagree. But um, yeah, so I kind of like the whole stagger start thing. Yeah, like I, a, I, like you say, okay jet with that. Like for like, the you'd say for like like race no, two, race three would all be staggered. No, no, no. Like, no. Right, so like uh, your qualifying times. Obviously, you, you'll go by that with gate pick on race one. Then however you finish race one, going into race two, instead of get, all right, so like, say Jet wins, he gets a twentieth gate pick. Kind of, oh. kind of flopped the system. Like, the yeah, it gets a different gate pick. Like, yeah, well, like if, because, if, yeah, if they cause would like, just take the grates out and you had to choose a rut, it would make a, you know, <laughs> that would, uh, none of that would matter. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I do like probably, that re- reverse. I thought you meant like staggered start. Uh, like you're talking would, about reverse. Yeah, the, reverse. Reverse yeah. order. But, but would you, I mean, think about it. If AP, they do it in arena cross. AP, our boy AP, yeah. say he's running third, somehow crashes with a lap or he gets 15th. He's gonna be in did, matter in hell. Did yeah, but you then with the guys in, that were like running first, maybe like oh, I'm gonna back it down a little bit so I get a better. You know, I'll, I'll well, get fifth. I didn't so I, shake up the points still. Yeah. Did, uh, did y'all hear what they're what he's what he's doing for the pulp race? Who's that? No, yeah. I, I didn't listen to pulp, so I don't know. Um, I haven't had time. It's gonna. It's. I know he's changing something up, but I haven't. It's to gonna him. be something uh, like where it's it's gonna if one race divided into two motos something like that and then so you try to explain something but you don't really know no i got it <laughs> um whatever position you are in is going to be an, a, like a stagger start down the line and you like first goes to the last and like they're gonna and then your two points combine for your overall results like two like a motos like two okay. motos so the leader something would different. get the leader would get a one but then he'd have to start from 22nd and see how far he gets up Okay. Yeah, so. Trying something different. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Uh, I want to remind you guys, Vital MX has a fantasy league. If you haven't signed up, please go do so. Sign up for the Moto X Pod League. This week's winner was, once again, Kraus778. Kraus, I don't know if you get another prize. I guess you do. We haven't really talked about that yet, but I'll, I'll work on that. If you're listening, I don't think I've sent the email yet, but I will take care of that soon. So sign up for the Vital MX Fantasy League. doesn't cost anything. It's pretty fun. It's a little different than the other fantasy leagues. You have a million dollar budget. Each rider has a, po- a dollar value. You pick as many riders as you can get within that million dollar budget, and you get the points they get. And you have to pick at least one rider from each class. So, yeah, you could. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool. It's just something different. So check it out. Uh, I play every week. I suck really bad, just like I do at every fantasy league. But give it a shot. A um, couple things before we get to Corey Steed here in about eight minutes. Um, Hayden Deegan. I want to talk about Hayden for a minute. We talked about him kind of short-circuiting, his getting upset, hand gestures, being mad when things happen. He seems to, maybe there's a conversation within the Deegan family. Who knows? He's, he was a lot calmer this week. But what I noticed, Jeremy, when he crashed into the tough, hit the tough lock and crashed, there weren't any hand gestures. <laughs> Nobody was throwing a fit. Nobody was cussing him out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, does that do you? You have to hope that kind of opens his eyes. Like, wow, nobody was yelling at me. Yeah, I mean, I took dudes down. I don't think he acknowledges that, but he see he did seem to be more humble this week. Yeah, I think he realizes. Hey, there's a lot more eyes on me than I thought, and there's a lot more people criticizing oh, this week. I don't think the, I, I think he no, knows he how knows. many eyes are on. Yeah. He, I don't think he cares. He's well, he's had he's I had a number. That. That's not fair. He's yeah. had a number on his computer screen or his phone every single morning, telling me, telling him how many eyes he has on him. He he knows, but he. Well, I right. think he's just realizing that pick your battles. You I don't want so. to make everybody your enemy. I would rather see him focus on the racing and be like, again, I'm the opposite of the Daniel Blair. I don't like the drama. I don't want the talk, oh, I, shit talking. I just not in my, I, I don't want that in racing. I don't like it. I don't it's know It's like why. a love hate. It's like a love to hate thing. Yeah, I just want to watch these guys go race and be like, be friends, man. Can we all get along? Can we just all <laughs> love each other? Do you want to, well, you want the, the opening ceremonies Hugs. to be like a, Hugs, like buddy. they have one of those like little parachute, the little rainbow parachute things we used to have in like elementary school. Ring around, ring around, the, ring around about, the post. Everybody does like a little when, like, when Cameron kumbaya wins, circle. When Cameron wins the race this weekend, I want Deegan to come up. Like he came up, give him a thumbs up. Give him a hug, bro. We all need hugs. Uh, apparently uh, he used to have, McAdoo's uh, yeah, his jersey. jersey. Said, I, I actually, I was in the press conference, so I heard that. That was pretty funny. And he said his brother had one too. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. But Cam, I thought Cameron's response to that was she was like, I don't think there's one up there anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. I saw that. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, Jeremy, are you a drama guy when it comes to uh, racing? You like it? No. Are you, I'm not really. I'm not about it. Yeah, just be, it's not that hard to be just a nice guy, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. Can we all just get it's along. Kinda, I look at it kind of like work. You know, like you can might hate the dude. You got to like the dude during work in a way. Yeah. And then, 
you know, after work, you kind of go your separate ways. Kind of how I look at the whole racing thing. Uh, I want to bring up, uh, there's a fundraiser going on for, let me find my notes. I'm sorry, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Alistair Dickert. He got hurt at Springading. He got struck by lightning. I'm sure oh, most people heard about, heard about this. You can go to giveahand.com, and I would assume just search his name, our buddy Chase uh, Moore, who does photography and stuff. He was there. He was part of it. He sent the link to me. But, yeah, if you go, they're, they're raising some money. He's still in the hospital. He's still in ICU. They are from, like, oh, man, let me pull this out. I feel like they're from Africa. I should have done more research on this, and I apologize. I feel like. What are the odds, though? Dude, well, I mean, I think we've heard stories about that, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> they're pretty pretty slim. I was talking to my girlfriend mm-hmm. today, and she was actually getting her nails done by Heather Kiefer, and Heather was, were FaceTime, and Heather was, yeah, Aiden was, would have been there, but they decided to go home. That was the class. He would have been racing. So, well, thank Why, why thank, were they racing if there was, like, a. Five mile radius of uh, uh yeah man I don't know they didn't um they should have probably called it yeah I don't have where he's from so I'm sure there's lots of stuff out there but again giveahand.com Alistair Dickert was hurt um got struck by lightning he's in intensive care in oh, Texas crazy. still um so if you guys can spare anything that was at that was at Oak Hill or yeah or spring is that what spring, that's, oh spring, spring ding, ding. Spring yeah, ding is uh, uh why am I blanking <laughs> Uh, Regal's uh, underground. Yes. Well, I don't think Regal yeah. owns anymore, but. Oh, I think he's, still. yeah. Well. Anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, take care of that. Uh, we've got a few minutes before we get to. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't hear about that. I'm surprised I didn't see a, you know thing, what? a post on it. Because I was follow, I had stuff that was following the spring. <laughs> I had a stuff that was following the, the spring classic. So, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting point. Because I was talking to one of my, uh, my buddies, Spencer, today. And he was like, he was like, you know way more about the industry and the sport and keep up with it way more than. I do or anybody I know. And I'm like, well, that's funny because dark side <laughs> thinks I don't know a fucking thing. Uh, so it's, it's like <laughs> messing with you. Yeah. You get so butthurt. Do I? I feel like you do. I mean, you got Your mad that we got pizza. Like, oh, I guess I'll just go home, man. You go home. That was until I got it in my belly. Now I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your third time ever on the show and you get pizza. Yeah. What the, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, all right, it's all let's, good. Let's go back to Indy for just a second. There were a couple sections that were really... I felt difficult and kind of impressive. I want to see what your thoughts are on the track. Obviously, you got ruddy. That made it tough. But that table on the table was tough. These guys were struggling. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there was And then chuckles. the jumping into the whoops that Jet was doing. Mm-hmm. Kenny did it once or so a couple yeah. times. But those sections, I kind of like having a section like that that only a couple guys are really – well, everybody was doing the table table almost, but it, they were struggling with it. I like seeing these top-level guys struggle and then the the double into the roller to, to the quote-unquote whoops – was pretty cool because not everybody's doing it. Yeah, and it, made it, it, it yeah, was it, it was impressive to see something that did actually separate the guys. Yeah, like I hate to say it, but every, whenever they pan on Tomac going through that table to table, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, he just yeah. messed up. He's rolling through there. I'm like, man, this is not a like, good. Look. I <laughs> felt like it looked like what I would look like doing an <laughs> oh. easy table to table. Like I was like, ah, ah. You know, every lap, like, oh shit, oh yeah. shit, oh, I did it, I did it, cool. Yeah. Who's like, bike? Every, lap, every lap, I felt gone. like those guys were like, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. Oh. So, who's bike you reckon this time? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, yeah, track conditions, Scott. Um, any, anything stand out about that? Well, what was eye opening to me, and I just I know another thing about how crazy fast jets going is once. When it was clear and obvious that he was, that's where he was getting them, was jumping into that hoop section, and Chase saw that behind both of them, and then Chase still wasn't doing it that third moto. Yeah, I was. That was when I was like, because I was at first, I was like, (laughs) why isn't Chase doing it? Like, like it's obviously faster. Just do it. And then I guess I didn't realize like how crazy it was what he was doing. So. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like, I, I'm with you. I actually agree with you for once. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool uh, to have a section stuff, that yeah. not everybody's pulling the trigger on. Although I, I mentioned before the show we were talking and I saw, it was like, I think I was watching 09 Houston and there was like a table table. There was like a, I think it was like a table, table. single table or yeah. something like that. And, I was there that year. I think I know what you're and, talking about. And was it like a short, short section? Yeah. On the short side of the and stadium? Stu yeah. like, qua- like <laughs> was jumped from one all the way to the downside of like, the yeah, that was, yeah. What well, bring stuff like that back. What do y'all think about, you know, they everyone's talking about slowing the tracks down, slowing these riders down. What if we went, kind of went back to, like, the old school where you got whoop section, then you got a wall, then you go back into another set of whoops, kind of like back Not to everybody the, likes the wall. I mean, that's... Yeah, it, anything that's slow them down and make it yeah. more technical. Is yeah, I feel like what we saw this weekend is probably about as, as close as you're going to see to that, but yeah. I did like the, the gap in the... Yeah. 
All right, that's our first guest of the lines on the night. She's going to be brought to you tonight by Guts Racing. Andy Gregg and the Guts Racing crew continue to provide the best seats and foam available. If you want the same seats used by Rockstar, Husqvarna, Hep Suzuki, and many more, then you need Guts Racing. They have numer- numerous color possibilities, staple or Velcro installation options, wing seats, and the best foam in the business with the Phantom Ultralight Seat Foam. Don't forget, they have complete seats for the Talaria and Super 73 and covers for the Suron and Segway. They strive to ship orders within 36 hours, so visit GutsRacing.com and order today. Let them know. The Moto X Pod Show sent you tonight. Guts Racing brings us from the Rockstar Husqvarna GNCC team, Corey Steed. What's up, Corey? How's it going, boys? It's good. It's good. Really great to finally have you on here. This is your first time, so we want to get to know you a little bit. But uh, season's going pretty well for you so far. Are you happy with uh, with the first three rounds? Yeah. Um, obviously stoked to be um, top three every weekend so far. Um Obviously, I'm still hunting for that win. Mm-hmm. So, ready to get it off my back. Um, just the beginning of the season. Uh, it's always good to get it off early, and uh, yeah, hopefully, just start taking some off. Yeah, I feel like like last year, Rachel really seemed to dominate. But this year, there's uh, you. Uh, she's won one, I believe. Randy Richards has won one. Uh, Shelby Turner, I think, won the last one. So it feels like it's a little bit tighter amongst the ladies this year. Is, would you yeah. agree or is it just track conditions? What, what's been the, what do you feel has been the difference this season? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. It's just this sport um, for this off-road female class is just elevated like to a crazy amount this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's kind of been track conditions. Um, like this last one was a, a super mutter and it's definitely not my specialty, but um, <laughs> I mean, I still got third, so I, I can't really complain about it, but. Yeah, so this weekend is Camp Coker. It's more of like a sandy track, and I'm pretty sure there's uh, rain on the radar. Oh, wow. But um, no, it kind of like suits my style a little bit more, though. So I think it'll be good. But um, yeah, it's just been kind of, we've been thrown a lot of different conditions already this year. Well, and I think that's really good for off road. But before we kind of get any more into the season as it is, I want to get your background since it is your first time on here. Uh, tell us a little bit about where you grew up how you got into moto if it was a family thing or just how you how you started yeah for sure um i'm from beloit ohio just a little small town (laughs) um grew up born and raised and then um my dad actually used to race hill climbs like way back in the day and uh so he was like always into motorsports and then my neighbor down the street growing up was fred andrews and um uh x pro like mx gncc all around like solid solid rider yeah uh, super cool guy and um i was like best friends with his sons growing up so i was like always around his house and like saw all the guys on his team and like thought they were superheroes you know <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah and I just, like yeah i begged my parents like for so long to get me a bike and they got me like a little razor like one of those blue electric bikes for my birthday on like my fifth birthday i think <laughs> i remember and, those uh, yeah, yeah. And I seriously to this day wish they put like an hour meter on that thing because <laughs> I swear I probably put more time on that thing than any bike I've had ever since. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. I, I, I always uh, I always think it's really cool when somebody gets into the sport who like their family wasn't really into it and then like yeah. you found the passion for it really more. I mean you said your dad was into motorsports, but you found the the passion for this off road stuff and then took it to this massive level. And I assume your, your family kind of had to learn a little bit about it. And, and it probably, it was like a probably really interesting transition from where you started to where you are now. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I, I grew up around like Fred Andrews and his race team. Yeah. So um, I like kind of knew a little bit, a little bit about racing and like the sponsorship side of things. And Fred tried to, to teach us a little bit about it. But um, I started going to MTF, I think in, 2014 or 15 so um i kind of built a relationship with them and i lived at mtf for three years and um like did the whole like moto training facility um the whole full time like it was a job for me when i was 15 so wow um yeah and i've done it all (laughs) so did you ever consider trying to go moto and wmx or was it was off-road all kind of always calling to you yeah um so i raced moto since I was five years old up until 2017, I think was my last year at Loretta's. So I raced like full-time moto up until 2017. And um, I was kind of having like, I was just kind of struggling with the whole moto thing, like full-time moto training at MTF, like having some 
some family issues and mm. uh, I was kind of just over it like almost to the point where I was ready to hang the boots up and uh 2017 December Fred actually like called me and was like hey we have this offer from gas gas if you want to go race GMCC and I was like no way like <laughs> it was kind of a last ditch effort that I was going to go out and just like try to have fun for a year. And then it was like, it sparked like the racing back up in me. And, um, yeah, ever since then, it's just been like, I ride my dirt bike. I love riding my dirt bike every day. And, um, yeah, I've got myself to this point now. That's <laughs> from awesome. That yeah. Last ditch, yeah. Effort in 2018. That's awesome. I love how things come together sometimes like that. Yeah, yeah no doubt. So we've, you know, we've, for the years we've been, I've always been predominantly moto and the, this show has, and it's, we've stepped into the GNCC world and, and I'm actually going to be doing my first cross country race this weekend. Uh, it's your second. You just quit the first one. That was enduro. That it's was a hard enduro. Thing, bro. You no, quit. You quit. no. You quit, Corey. You quit your first one and then you came I, back and had redemption. Yeah, but I thought I broke my collarbone. You just quit because it was I hard. Yeah, that's for true. Even- Trying a hard enduro. No, <laughs> come on, Corey. Give him no. We we well, give was, Scotty lots of. We like to make. Yeah, fun of it was like, hey, you can ride my bike this weekend in this hard enduro if you want. I was like, okay, that sounds fun. And then I get there, I'm like, what the hell did I get myself yeah. into? But uh, I'm sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so so this this weekend I'll I'll be doing one. And the question I wanted to ask is, it's what I've seen so far. Is it like you'll you'll see a drop off or a, a hill or something and. And you think that like, oh my God, that's so intense. Like that's got to be the hardest part of the course. And then it turns out to be like one of the rather easy th- easier things to do. What challenges you the most uh, obstacle wise or just part of the course that you uh, had to overcome or challenges you the most? Yeah, for sure. Like coming from the moto background, um, the my biggest struggle is definitely like the muddy races where it's super deep ruts, long ruts, like nothing like a moto track where it's prepped and there's perfect turns in every corner and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like all this smooth stuff. But yeah, um, like the biggest thing is like the big gnarly roots and like big, long, like turny ruts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like the deep mud holes where you like something looks like it's safe and then you go into it and it's four foot deep and it's like, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah. They just bury the bike. Yeah. Yeah. But I- no, like that is, are you racing the GMCC? Uh, it's a it's a TCCRA, so it's the like Texas, Texas, series. Texas series. So I I went to the first round with my my buddies, and I hadn't rode in like two years, and I did the practice day. I just didn't do the race, and right. like it was it, it's crazy it's coming, especially from a moto guy. Like they had like this, you dropped into a ravine, and then it had like it had a bunch of ruts going up it, and it was this jump was held up by like a, a cloth of a backhoe. And then there was just a, a gap and then a wall tabletop, like underneath the trees. And it was like, I was like, and these guys, these guys just hit it like nothing is. Yeah. So it's on the- <laughs> do what? What cor- did you say, Corey? I said, were you on the course or did you just- no, I so there was an option. There was an option to go on, uh, around it, and so I went that way. I, I don't, I don't know about this series, Corey. If like one of the jumps is held up by a, a backhoe, I, I, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. It's not a GNCC, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think you should uh, come do a GNCC. That sounds pretty hectic. Whatever you're doing. I've, I've been telling that because I've done four now, uh, and yeah, there I did Big Buck this year and a couple last year. And I, again, I'm a moto guy too. And just in the last couple of years, I've started doing some off-road stuff and I'm falling in love with it, which is why I want to get you on. And I've had Craig DeLong on and a lot of these other GNCC riders because it really has taken a hold of my passion of riding. I love it. I'm starting to like it more than moto, honestly. Yeah. I feel like the atmosphere is just like really Oh, uh, the atmosphere is unreal. I like it. It's so lot. fun. I liked it a yeah, lot. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh. Uh, hey, Corey, I got a, I got a friend that told me to tell you hi. His name is uh, Jameson Greider. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's been my buddy for a, a long, long time. I and mean, I had to call him to get some information about you. <laughs> I hope, hopefully it's good stuff. Oh yeah. He says you're cool. You're cool. Um, I got, so it seems like you've been with the Austrian group for a long time. Um, how was it going from the KTM to the Husqvarna? Yeah. Um, at like, I don't know, 50% of people say it's like the same and then the other 50% say it's different. And I definitely felt like it was different. Like, as soon as I sat on the bike, I like immediately felt more comfortable. Um, it hits a little lower to the ground and I have short little stubby legs. So it definitely <laughs> benefits me. Um, but yeah, just sitting on the bike, just, I just felt at home. 
And um, yeah, it's been a really good transition and we're getting really comfortable and a good setup with suspension. So I'm absolutely stoked with them. Awesome. Uh, it might sound, this might sound stupid, but uh, does the GNCC, do they run the full year with the, uh, I guess the... They have a summer break. Right. I didn't that, know if they, you know, like in w, WMX, they did like five rounds out of the 12. Do they do something similar to that or do they just run the full season? Yeah, the full season. Yeah, oh, yeah, the women do the full season. Yes. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, they, the, I'm not the women race in the morning, <laughs> which I want to ask her about that. Like they're separated from the quote unquote PM, the, the pro men. Right. Which I think, I don't know how I feel about that. I want to ask her her thoughts on that in a minute. But yeah, they do race every round. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Corey, I, w- I do want to ask about that. This is your first year, year on the Rockstar Husqvarna team, I believe. You were right. on the Trail Gestures KTM last year. And again, forgive us for being a little bit ignorant. Uh, the Husqvarna team, Rockstar Husqvarna, obviously is a factory level team. How did the Trail Gestures KTM team compare to the Rockstar Husky team? Uh, whether it be, um, you know, just availability of parts and resources. Right. Um, honestly, like Ross that owns the Trail Gestures team is like unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, he did absolutely everything and anything he could to make sure that we had everything we needed every weekend. And um, like the support with them was unreal. Um, I think it was probably like the best um, privateer team, whatever you would want to call it. Right. Um, out there. Like Ross, yeah, he really um, broke his back to like make sure we had everything we needed to be just as the factory guys were, you know. So was that a difficult? I, I did actually read something where you were talking about Russ and Ross and how good he was to you. Was that a difficult decision to make to leave that team? But I, I assume the opportunity was just a little bit better, and to you know have a guy like Craig DeLong as a teammate. I think those things are all probably very beneficial. Yeah, for sure. And and Ross is like his main goal is to kind of push us to a factory team. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he was he was a big part of it too. Going to the Husky team, um, he was part of the choice, and yeah, I mean he's. He supported me for two years and, and got me to this point. So, um, but yeah, he's the trail gestures, Ross, he was, the, the whole team was just unreal. And, um, it sucks that he doesn't do it anymore, but he still supports some of the factory teams, um, okay. kind of on the side, but yeah, he, uh, yeah. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. The, it's, it's crazy that, you know, I've heard rumors that the WMX is, is supposed to come back. Um, it does seem it like is back. it is back. Yeah. They've already had, uh, yeah. two rounds. Two rounds. Yeah, two rounds. Oh, I, I thought it was going to be like a part of the national series. It's going to be a part of two of the nationals, Ironman oh, okay. and High Point, I believe. Have you have you been lured to go to any of those, or like, are, you know, GNCC is your home, and you're going to stay there now? I wish uh, my schedule is so hectic between GNCC, US for Enduro, um, potentially ISCE, and then also I'm going to race Loretta's. So I just had I just did an area qualifier this past weekend at um, Next Level 101. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to go to the regional and then possibly go to Loretta's too, if it works out. <laughs> How'd you like that track? Uh, Jessica Patterson and of course, Daniel Blair is involved with that. Uh, Eddie Ray, that, that place is fun. Oh, it's unreal. The dirt there makes you feel like a hero. For their bike. <laughs> well, I raced it last year at the verb classic and it was really muddy and I did not feel like a hero. <laughs> I could barely make a lap cause I can't ride in the mud either. It was like snot. Yeah. If it's, if it rains the slightest bit there, it's clay. So you, yeah, you go from hero to the dirt real, oh, real quick. I don't know how many times I hit the dirt, but I did beat Daniel Blair. Yeah. Because he... Technicalities, but he, well, he signed up in, in the plus 45 class or plus 40 class or whatever I was racing. And he was smoking me until he endoed and flipped over the bars and didn't finish. <laughs> so I beat Daniel Blair. That's all I, that's what I've got. Hey, yeah. it's racing. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Um, yeah, so I have you... Have you talked, like, I don't know what your relationship is with a guy like Craig Long, who's a legendary rider. Do you guys talk and, you know, ride together very often in your training? You pick up on things from him? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, he kind of, like, just before the first uh, GNCC, he stayed a little longer after his test and um, kind of helped me out with my bike. But, no, I've actually, I've known Craig and his brother, Andrew, uh, probably since I was six or seven because mm-hmm. uh, Andrew rode for Fred. Um, but yeah, so Andrew, his brother was like one of the guys that I really looked up to. And, uh, yeah, I've kind of really, I've known them, uh, basically like my whole life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a pretty tight knit community anyway. Oh yeah, for sure. And they're from, they're from PA. So they're only about like an hour and a half from my house. Awesome. Yeah. He's, I like but, him. Yeah, for sure. They're both, the whole family is just great. 
Yeah. So, uh, Corey, so you've done one of the ISDE challenges before, and it looks like you've been talking. You said you were maybe possibly doing that again. Uh, my my question on that is like. I already struggle enough just to not look right directly in front of me when I ride, <laughs> much less look up and then add on top of that. I have to like read a map on my handlebars. So, uh, it, I don't know how any of that works. How, how was that transition for you? And what, what else did you think about the, that kind of style of, uh, stage riding? Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's actually just arrow. Um, we kind of just like follow arrows all day, like through town, um, through fields, mountains, wherever. So the first year I went uh, was in France and I was like off my rocker, like terrified because everyone was telling a <laughs> hundred different things to like watch out for, like, don't do this, don't do that. So like, I remember the first day, like I got on my bike and I swear my hands were just like trembling for like two hours before we even started. Cause I was just like thinking about all this stuff that I shouldn't be doing. And, uh, but no, like once you get out there and I just followed my teammates really all day. And, um, like after the first two days were over, I was like, all right, I got this. It's no big deal. And you're kind of just like out there and gritting it out. Like <laughs> you ride for eight hours plus a day. Um, it's just, it's gnarly, but yeah, you follow arrows all day. Try not to get lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Try to, try to make it to the finish line every day. <laughs> Chorus D tonight brought to you by Guts Racing. Yeah, that that made me think of like the old Waypoint races on like MX Unleashed and all those games. And like, <laughs> and I would I would like I would just be so like trying to hit random jumps and stuff. And then all I'd look up and the arrow's pointing backwards. And it's like, oh, shoot yeah. You so I yeah. So uh, I don't know how well I do in that. So kudos to you yeah. for being able to pull that off. I, it's got to it had to have been quite the the uh, change and to you know did I. Sorry for my lack of ignorance. Did y'all did y'all win that year? Last year, yeah. No, no. Okay. So the, the first year in France that I went, oh. um, we were winning, and then we had uh, my teammate Brandy. She kind of had a big get off and crashed out. So first year was just kind of a scratch for us, and then this past year, um, we actually did win. So yeah, okay. it was it was pretty unreal to win one of those, and uh, yeah, the feeling of that is like unmatched to get yeah. done with six racing and like wow we won this <laughs> yeah i was making sure that you're a part of this team I, I remember seeing the highlights and it seemed like y'all like one of the one of the girls was was uh was riding with like their shoulder and like y'all definitely had uh this some, year or a lot it was i think it was this year the, the, so i mean 23 last but like, yeah it was one of those yeah big races recent, yeah like i do that. feel like <laughs> there was some issues in 23 when you won the championship right you had some a day that maybe you were behind schedule a little bit or i can't remember because we talked to brandon richards but um and then rachel uh goodish or goodish how do you say her last name goodish goodish yeah. you got i feel like you had a day where you had to make up a lot of time yeah um it's kind of all a blur. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> she she won. We're moving on. Forget yeah. about the all the all the pain. <laughs> what, what what stood out from that that event? Six day. I mean, that's again the win. Obviously, is the main thing. But the event itself, what stands out? You say it's a blur, but I'm sure there's a couple moments. Yeah. Oh no, for sure. So like the first day, um, I kind of came into the week. Uh, I think I was sick like for two weeks the week before we left. So I came into it like already kind of down and uh first day a bunch of people had like heat strokes like we were out in the desert like just pounding sand whoops for eight hours half mm. the field didn't make it i think it went down in the record books like being like the most dropouts in day one of isde history wow. so it was like yeah it was a gnarly one it was super hot um but yeah so i almost had a heat stroke like i was literally out there hitting sand whoops like about to fall off my bike like i just remember like talking to myself like talking myself through the day yes. like i'd be like onto a road transfer and just being like don't throw up like <laughs> don't pass out like you're gonna be okay <laughs> okay i'll keep going i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt i just no, have i have no, a question that, okay so i did uh wild boar last year when it was really hot and yeah. it's like 13 miles of sand whoops and that's how i felt in just the two hour morning race like i was gonna throw up yeah. so how do you prepare for something like that? I mean, obviously you didn't really know it was going to be that way, but you said it was like all day. I could barely do it for two hours. I don't, I just don't even understand how like you do. Like, it's just incredibly hard. Oh, for sure. But 
yeah, like I said, the biggest thing was my body was already super run down from mm. being sick. But yeah, like usually to prepare for that, you're kind of just like riding your bike a lot before ISVE, um, getting like IVs before, just making sure your body is like top tier, 110%, like ready to take a beating. Um, and then the biggest thing is like staying hydrated, like yes. every day during the day, like eating a lot of food all day. Um, and it's, and it's hard too, because you only have like 10 minutes throughout the day, like random checkpoints to like shove food in your face, like still do bike maintenance. And if anything crazy happens, like you don't have time to eat or drink or do whatever. So it's, it can be really hectic. Absolutely. Do, do y'all ever utilize the, like, I know for the last several years, they, um, I've always used them for hangovers, but I know that they work well for that uh, um, hydration. Have y'all ever used the liquid IVs, like put it in the Camelback or anything like yeah. that? I, I was, I was, I had that on my head, like doing these GNC or these TCCRAs I'm going to do. I was like, I might throw a packet of those in there yeah, and just yeah, see what absolutely. happens. Yeah, we all kind of have our own like hydration fuel. I use Scratch. Um, it's like the only one that doesn't really mess with my stomach, but I'm pretty sure a few people do use um, the liquid IV. Um, but yeah, everyone kind of just has their own thing that works for them. That's like the hydration powder. Yeah. Gary Sutherland, he, he sent me, or he had me get some scratch and some element. I don't like to say element or element T, but, uh, yeah. that's what I like. I, I didn't really like the scratch cause it wasn't quite strong enough for me flavor wise, but yeah, you that's throw another soup in there. Yeah. Well I, I did, but I, I, I prefer the <laughs> element L I'm going to say element T. I don't know how you say it, but. Uh, element? but yeah, I didn't element? use, I did not. Is it element? I, I've heard I would imagine. Say, L, I've heard people say element <laughs> So anyway, it doesn't matter. That, <laughs> that's not important. I didn't do any of that for uh wild boar. And that's why I got so dehydrated. And Gary was like, yeah, dude, you got to use all this stuff. And so I learned something. I should have been asking people like Corey ahead of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you, you have to live and learn these things. I've got a few more questions for you before we, well, we let you, I've, I've, all, I've, you know, I'll just say, I've also heard from some of the vet guys that mm -hmm. would do, uh, Coors Light and Red Bull. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we want to try that one out one day, Corey. I don't know how this Husky, Actually, Husky, uh, rock star Stu Baylor. <laughs> yeah. Is that what yeah. Stu does? Yeah. I actually put rock star and Coors Light in my hydration pack before the races. Okay. I don't know if I believe you, yeah. but we <laughs> it really, Gets you, you get your heart going. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky Mountains, man. Yeah. All right. A few more questions for you before we let you go. Um, the AM PM thing, I've asked Rachel this. And first of all, I feel like off road riders are very underappreciated and not disrespected so much, but I don't think you guys get the respect you deserve for what you do. And then I wonder in the women's class, with the WXC class, when they put you in the AM race, the two hour race versus the the two the three hour with the XE or uh why am I free um yeah XE one XE two does that bother you or do you kind of prefer just the two hour yeah um personally yeah I do I do like the two hour but um recently the lappers have been getting like next level bad like just kind of ruining the race for all of us mm -hmm. so the three hour I think would benefit us in some ways but also hurt us. Uh, because like in the 10 a.m. like the race is kind of like surrounded around the WMX, um, like the WXC girls, whereas like the afternoon race is XT1, XT2, XT3. You know, yeah, like yeah. for the the racer TV coverage, I think we would. I don't really think we would get much coverage. Um, but yeah, I think the 10 a.m. just being surrounded like about the WXC class is a big thing for us. Um, just the spotlight mm -hmm. is uh, a I think, but yeah, I don't know. It's difficult because there's, <laughs> there's positives and negatives to both of them. So it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Rachel said the same thing about lappers, uh, after well, I talked to her at the end of the day at big buck. And I was like, look, I got the hell out of the way. I know by the end of lap two, <laughs> early lap three, you ladies are coming. So I'm just looking back and finding a place to get out off the track. So I was not a problem. I can tell you that. But I get it, though, because it is very hard to pass. Uh, and, and that weekend at Big Buck, it, I, I think Stu actually said it was a little bit harder to find places to pass than normal. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was, yeah, honestly, like all the tracks so far this year have been like super difficult to pass on, which is kind of abnormal. Mm. Um, but, yeah, hopefully, hopefully the tracks start to open up a little bit more. 
especially uh, for the 10 a.m. class. Yeah, it's, that's a crazy concept. Passing on a goat trail and with trees around is is, yeah, is you gotta, tough. You got to find like, there's the split <laughs> lanes here and there, and yeah, you, yeah, you just got to find spots to go. Or just send it over a, a creek or something. I've seen people do that too. <laughs> send it over the lap or a tree, creek, whatever. <laughs> what? you do. That's that's interesting. What what is like the like the craziest just impromptu something that you've like, Oh, I'm just going to send it here. And then you're like, Oh, I got bit off a little more and chew or anything like that, that you can remember. Um, honestly, every weekend, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> well, um, well, every, yeah, every weekend it's like, you think you have the pass made and it's like Larry loop out comes out of nowhere <laughs> and then you're on the ground and it's like, yeah. it's unreal. If well, I wear a GoPro, for these races like you guys would not believe the shit that we go through yeah. and it's not even just other racers it's spectators like don't don't just oh. be on the track <laughs> yeah oh yeah they, yeah <laughs> you'll start revving and they're looking all around like oh where are they coming from yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy but how it's many, so how much many, fun how many cores lights you got in the camel bag there <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, not enough <laughs> yeah, a couple more here. Uh, are there any bucket list events that you would like to do? Maybe when you're done with GNCC, whether it be like an Erzberg or, or if you've ever done Tennessee Knockout. I mean, obviously the car. Yeah. Then there's the the West Coast series, like works. Anything that you really want to do? Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to do a works, but um, honestly, the only thing that's always in the back of my head is like FMX. Um, after being around like Travis and all those guys doing like the pit bike events. Yep. Um, it's kind of like sparked something in me where I, I really would like to dabble and learn some, some tricks. Okay. Maybe into a foam pit. Um, I've attempted a backflip. I've landed it into a foam pit, not to dirt yet. And I am very much ready to do it to dirt. <laughs> oh, well you'd definitely Travis be the guy to get you to go through that. And we actually have a, a for a vital forum question from, uh, S magical. He wanted to know what's harder racing a GNCC or racing a week long nitro circus pit bike race. Oh, he knows the answer to that. It's definitely <laughs> the pit bike race. <laughs> that's pretty gnarly. I, I've never had a chance to hang out with TP. I, I've yeah. said hi to him. That's about it. But what what an experience that must have been. Oh, yeah. He's unreal. And, like, the confidence that you get to to try things, like being around him and, like, the group of, of guys that is surrounded by him is, like, unreal. Like, yeah, you just would never think, like, hey, I can try a backflip and possibly land it. And it was, like, I didn't even think twice about it. I was, like, I'm going to – send into this foam pit I, I got it my second try and Heck i couldn't yeah. even do it on a trampoline before you know so wow that's i i've heard that, that he just inspires that's that's pretty cool yeah yeah I, I, it's yeah. funny i bet if you did a, if you did a poll over in the motocross community you know a bucket list item for everybody would be to go to uh pastrana land or do something with travis and then it's like you do you really though? Like if you do make sure that your insurance premiums paid because uh <laughs> it's gonna be a long weekend <laughs> Yeah, and it's like I almost it's not that I dread going for like the pit bike races, but it's like every every year I went, it was like I had to talk myself through it like it's going to be okay. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> and get there and it's just like all out in my head. It's like, all right, whatever they say, let's send it. <laughs> all right, I got two more for you. I got a, I got a question and then I need some advice. My question is what what are the relationships like with the other girls that you race with? Do you guys get along pretty well? Is it just normal or like, oh, I like this one. I don't like this one. Like, do you guys help each other out? Yeah. You don't have to um, give specifics. Yeah, I, definitely not. But <laughs> I'm pretty easygoing. Like, I just want everyone to be my friend. And I like racing dirt bikes. And I just want to have fun with everybody. But uh, obviously, there are some people in the sport that are, have a little bit of a different mindset. Okay. Um, so, there's a the couple there's a couple girls that um, are kind of just there and they're there to ride their dirt bike and not do anything else and not really talk to anyone else and that's all right but there's a couple of us that are actually like really good friends and I've built some like awesome relationships in the sport um, with girls that I race every weekend. I love and, that. Uh, yeah, it's it's super incredible. Like like Shelby Turner when she won this last race like immediately got off the track when I found out she won like ran over and gave her a massive hug like I was like so stoked for her that's awesome that it, yeah <laughs> like, we were, it almost 
Here's Matt. <laughs> we were just having this conversation a minute ago about like Hayden Deegan and him throwing a fit and different whatever. And I was like, why can't we just get all, all get along? I don't like drama. I want Hayden to get off the bike and hug Cameron McAdoo when he wins the <laughs> championship. The, the, not, the in, not in Detroit. Good job, man. You know, like that's what I want. So I love that. I love that. That's that's the answer I was hoping for. All right, now I need some advice. Okay. Oh yeah. Dude. Iron Man in twenty three twice, and um, Big Buck this year once. Roots front wheel, front tire, and roots do not go together well. I keep losing the front and plowing myself into the ground. What the hell am I doing wrong? Why can I not get over a set of roots? Do you ever practice on them? No. I just ride moto. Yeah. Well, maybe start there. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> my biggest thing uh, when I went made the switch to off-road was just, like, riding a gear high. And, like, when you're coming up to a rooty section, like, make sure your front end is, is light. You know, like, don't be sitting when you're going into it. Like, stand up. Get a little pop before you hit a root. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I just make sure your front end is light. <laughs> okay. So basically I just need some more skill. Yeah. But no, like, like I said, the, the biggest thing is riding a gear high and yeah. kind of letting your, your bike do the work and not, you know, making sure the chassis isn't so tight. Um, but yeah, I would try that. Let me know how that goes. Uh, yeah. Well, I would play, I will definitely be at Iron Man. I would like to do another one, another one, other sometime this year. So I will definitely be at another GNCC at some point. And I will definitely give you uh, an update. That sounds great. Or I can just give you a thumbs up when you're lapping me on lap three. Yeah. <laughs> you send them into a tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Corey, this has been a lot of fun. I really have enjoyed getting to know you. I don't know if you remember, I did come talk to you at Big Buck in the morning, did a little interview with you. But um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. And I, I know a lot of our listeners are really into the off-road stuff, which we don't do enough of. So thank you. Yeah, heck yeah. Thank you guys for bringing it to the off-road scene it's great of course of course we'll uh, we'll see you soon at the gncc and good luck awesome thank you guys all right take care bye yep that's Corey steed she crushes it um she killed, i think she's second points right now two down if i'm not mistaken uh in the series three rounds in so yeah uh their march 25th is the next one at camp coker in south carolina that's not this weekend right that's next weekend i think yeah that's next weekend so gncc is cool man yeah yeah we talked before. I got to figure out a way to get you to one of these, and if I can, yeah, figure something yeah, out. Yeah, and and uh, they know I was. I know GNCC is a whole other level. I, I have been impressed. With, you know, we went. I rode the practice at the TCCRA, and yep. I mean that's not like a fly by night ex organization. They've been doing it sure, for sure, of course, for years, and they 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 do a really cool job. I can't imagine how gnarly it is doing the GNCCs with the. You know, because the the four wheelers are there and everything. Well, they're like, there the day before. But I mean, still, I yeah. You know, and I don't know if they do it at every round, but I believe at Iron Man they would go out and, and at night and kind of fix some of the sections that the four wheelers will say messed up, were made it worse for the two wheel bikes. I don't know if they do it everywhere. The, uh, I didn't really notice any issues when I was racing. Big buck worth because of the four wheelers. Like it was fine. Yeah, yeah. It was fine. It, you're, it's so it's so worked in. It doesn't yeah. even really matter. Like but you're just like, trying to survive anyway. A, a, a cross country track fix and a motocross track fix are not the same thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't. They would just go out there with how like, I, know, I don't know. I'm I don't just even saying, what like, they did, but yeah. A fix um, is is right. different. We've got a little bit of time before we get Drew Adams on, so let's get into the X brand form check in. X brand is your choice for clear vision and a leader in motocross and off road goggles. X brand is used by many of the top GNCC riders, including the 2023 XC1 champion Craig DeLong, the 2023 National Heron Hound champion XC1 champion Dalton Shuri, 23 AMA National Enduro champion Grant Baylor, also Lyndon Snodgrass, and motocross, supercross, and arena cross riders like Cal Chisholm, Freddie Noren, Henry Miller, Michael Hicks, Richard Taylor, Jerry Robin, and more. Use X brand. So visit eksbrand.com or go to your local dealership and ask for X brand distributed through WPS. Uh, all right, X brand forum check in this week. Let me pull this up real fast. The title of the the forum um, check in. Yeah, no, the uh, topic <coughs> oh. is called Whoop Theory, posted by YZR250R. He says now they are taking the whoops out making fewer of them on the four-stroke era, making them smaller. Shouldn't the pros that practice constantly from the age of two with exotic suspension be able to skim whoops the size of a car? Since the four-strokes came out, now the technique is to jump through them. 
Are they still whoops when you jump through them? Or are they just jumps at that point? Carmichael says it's faster to jump through them, and I don't want to argue with that dude. But we are taught that keeping the wheels on the ground is faster than when they are in the air. Skimming straight across the top has to be faster than jumping up and over them. Okay. Not a bad point. I do wish 95% of whoops were freaking whoops that had to be skimmed. I wish they could figure out a way to keep them together. So they had to skim them. I don't really like the fact rubber, that, rubber that whoops. whoops become jumpers. I don't, to me, they're not whoops anymore. Yeah. Let's go to you first, Jeremy. What are your thoughts on whoops? A lot of this is just what four strokes do to the dirt in general. I think break them down. They, the dirt just can't stay together, but I would like there to be a way. Perfect world. Whoops are big, gnarly, skimmable whoops every time. Yeah, I wish they had more, in my opinion, for, I guess, just the years growing up. You do see in, like, you know, the uh, McGrath area, era, the Carmichaels, the Chad Reeds, the Stewarts, you know, seeing what they had to go through. I'm like, why? We have better technology. We have better equipment now. Why are we making it shorter? But I understand on the safer side. When you say shorter, do you mean lower whoops or shorter sections <coughs> oh, yeah. of whoops? I think they're, they're shorter in height and okay. shorter in length. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, I was like, these guys have the best of the best. We're in a, you know, in an era right now where you can't get any better. Why are we making it this much easier? Because, mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, you know, they got the grates, they had the whole shot devices, yeah. They, yeah. Short whoops, um, uh, everything's like a you know slot car racing out there. So let's make some separation, like uh, adding that wall in the middle and having you know, twelve whoops with a big wall. And you got six and six; they're kind of spread open a little bit. Kind of takes a little bit of the risk out, just slows it down. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I think about it. Okay, right. got it. Well, uh, before I go to that, what was it? You know, you're the only one here that's actually straight up blitzed a real supercross set of whoops. What was? You don't f- know what I've done. I, no, you haven't done that. Uh, that's actually not completely accurate. A couple, it was, a couple was how much? And, yeah, how no, much? Michael, how much drinks and duct tape? Up at was Michael Gage's track in Gilmer, he had I think it was nine arena cross whoops, and I did blitz them arena twice. cross whoops. Are they were pretty freaking big, dude, and <laughs> I actually or? blitzed them pretty hard twice, and was terrified, but I did try it. Yeah, whenever, did not crash. Actually. You didn't do it inside of uh, eighteen. No, I did not. But with, like, it, I guess I, I interrupted. Thousands of people. All right, I interrupted for no reason. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whenever I was We're racing, used to it. when I was racing arena cross, I was <laughs> like, "How do you expect me to grab fourth gear coming out of this, <laughs> out of this first turn into the whoops? Like, how is that going to be possible?" Then I tried it in third, ran out of motor. Then next thing you know, yep. falling in, falling in, yeah. doing doing you know all the rookie stuff, and finally found a fi- figured out how the way to grab fourth and. Way yeah. different. It's yeah, it's a but, big difference. That, yeah. That's what I was actually told too. I, I think I don't remember who was riding there that day. It was like um, Ky- no, it wasn't Kyle Cunningham. It was somebody like that that was out there, and he's like John Short. No, it was before John was riding that at that level. This was like 06, oh. 07. Mm. and I can't remember who came out there, but like even um, God, I'm wrong. it doesn't matter. Yeah. A rider of that level that was like a privateer was out there, and he's like, dude, you, you got to shift to fourth because I was yeah. doing it in third. And, and it, I, honestly, it was scary, but it made – once you hit you're like, oh, wow, this is actually quite – Chatfield? No, it, I, I really don't remember. It doesn't matter who it was. It yeah. just – I'm just saying that, yeah, the fourth gear made a big difference. Yeah, whenever it was at Compound 77, they had a big set of whoops, and I think I got through there clean probably – Four times out of the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah. how, my head how many laps times. out of how many laps? Yeah, literally like probably 60. Yeah. yeah you got any more thoughts on it before um, we move on? I, I, yeah, I, I think that I'm not a really, I don't really like the nine uh, whoop rule. I think it's kind of lame. Um, at least if you're going to do that, at least have uh, bring the dragons back. Dragons mm. back, back? Kind of out on dragons back. Yeah. I like always liked way, them. Yeah, to watch, but they're, I think well, they're I, way I, more dangerous. So, had no anticipation or plans to enter one of I these. Don't. I'm purely watching. I don't want to so. see any of our guys die, and they just, yeah. they just bite too many uh, riders. I, you know, but going off of safer, though. going off of what he was saying, like, you know, we're making a lot of this stuff easier. What if there was, you know, we can talk hypothetical scenarios all, all we want. What if there was an option where you split the whoops in half and you made some of them where you, you could made it where you could jump through them and then another side that was for blitzing. And then, I it, mean... It, it'll still get canceled out just for the fact that they got that, like, dark fish thing, whatever it's Yeah, called. I know. It, it's yes, in, in my yes. dream world, it would be cool to see, but dark, with dark fish, and like you said, everything's so easy now. It's it's hard. It's, it's yeah. what we're facing uh, against. All right, that's been the X-Brand Forum check-in. We're going to move on to the Barnett Clutch... Barnett Clutch's <laughs> Clutch Performance of the Week. You really gave yourself a tongue twister there, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit. With 75 years of experience behind them, Barnett Dirt Deer Clutch Kits feature friction materials exclusive to Barnett for maximum performance and durability. 
Get 10% off with promo code VITALMX, all caps, at barnettclutches.com and feel the Barnett difference. You know you guys are going to need some clutches eventually, just like you're going to need that race tech suspension work. Why not hit up barnettclutches.com and use the promo code to save and support the show. Guys, get it done. Um, all right. So anybody have a clutch performance from the weekend that stands out? Anything? If I have one, mm-hmm. and if you guys hadn't thought about it. Yeah, I got one. Okay. It's about my about my work, but. Let's let's hear it. Uh, it's not exactly the idea, that, yeah. that, that, but, <laughs> segment, but let's go with it. Came, well, we came in clutch at the last five minutes of work in one day. We closed a hundred thousand in sales. Oh, nice! nice. Yeah, and, I, and that was uh, it's pretty clutch. So yeah, you should have paid for the pizza tonight. It's pretty clutch. He he offered. I think I did offer. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh wow. I think yeah. I don't know if ML still listening, but we'll just make ML pay for it. All right, that works. Hey, the the, the YouTube chat that we've gotten over the the years should cover it. The YouTube chat donations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know that, where that goes. Do you have a clutch performance of the week? We got about five minutes you, before you we got to get. Do you do yours first, Drew? Um, I'm going with Cody Shock. So Cody, we know he he uh, had a cracked collarbone going into Alabama, ended up breaking it fully all the way. Had surgery Monday, came back what, five days, six days later to qualify 10th in Indy? Mm-hmm. Uh, heat race, I don't, oh, well, he, there was no heat race. He, what What do you go, five, eight, three? I'm trying to remember what is, I think. Five, eight, eight. Five, eight, eight, yep, for fifth overall. Thank you. Uh, five, eight, eight, overall, or uh, fifth overall, which I don't even care about the overall. It's just clutch the dude showed up, race, got some points. Um, you know, not everybody can do that. The surgery... Makes it pretty a collarbone pretty strong, but I think it's just a clutch performance for Club MX and himself to come out and knock it out. And good job, Cody. You know, there's people out there going, "Oh, did he really break it or whatever?" Yeah, I believe he did. I, I mean, I, there's no reason for him to lie. He was. I talked to him Saturday night after Alabama. He had just gotten out of the uh, Alpine Stars medical mm-hmm. unit and had the X-ray. And said it was broke. So I no reason to not believe him. Yeah, clutch performance, that's, Cody Shock. Good job, buddy. Yeah, that's in, that's insane. He was doing he was doing pushups like. Yeah, I heard Weech like, say like, that. Which, yeah, like 15 minutes after surgery or something. I don't yeah. know, or something like that. Uh, that's, gnarly, dude. That's 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 our sport is gnarly. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do clutch performance with uh, with uh, McAdoo. He's okay. He, you know, obviously Detroit was Detroit. We won't go there. Yes, um, Detroit was Detroit. That yeah, is true. Yeah, and then uh, well, he obviously w- Detroit was Tampa. Uh, what? Oh. Well, you know what I meant. I do. But um, then he 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 was he was turning into like. Uh, Tim Ferry with the seconds, you know, like the winning the championship without winning a race. So he he got the consistency paid off. He got one. So I want to I'm going to say that he was he was my clutch performer. Okay, I like it. What about L uh, AC with his clutch performance on the bailing off the bike in that rec- that sequence? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, all right, we can give him an honorary mention. Oh, honorable mention, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chase Moore just texted, and I guess there's an Instagram post or maybe a follow up on give a hand.com and it says that that um alistair had woke up today and was able to respond for a little bit for an hour then got confused and a little aggressive so they put him back under but maybe that's a good sign he was at least conscious and awake and aware. Right. so yeah uh, again uh give hand give a hand.com search out alistair dickert and yeah maybe you can mm. give some support prayers for the family yeah yeah, absolutely. Purse for the family. Um, anything else before I'm about to get Drew on? How about Max Ansi, man? I, I feel bad for Max. Tough really, luck. Really like Max. Bike blows up last weekend, loses the uh, points lead. 13th in Indy after a crash in the, the last. He had, a, I think he went off the track in the first race. The last race, he went, he crashed. Now he's back down to eighth in points. Rough, man. It's like you got to mentally overcome that. Probably not too easy, Jeremy, but yeah. something that he's going to have to do. Championship, pretty much off the table, I yeah. would feel. Yeah, I, I feel like he's pretty strong mentally guy. Yeah, I do. And I agree. I just uh, just wrong place, wrong time. And yeah. uh, he's not really help, doing himself any favors by getting himself into better spots. But uh, I think he's just doing what he can, and he's got to dig himself out of this hole. Yeah, and I think for, you know... <laughs> We we all we all want to you know set examples for the for the future and I think that he is he showed a real lesson in maturity. Yep. The way he handled it was a class yep. act. Um, bad luck, but he kept on. He's going to keep on going. So yeah, a lesson for everybody to kind of take notes from him how to handle a poor situation. Yeah, we had Max on the show last week and he was on Pulp last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like his attitude. Very positive. Our next guest of the night's on. 
Tonight is going to be brought to you by FXR, which is designed by racers for racers with industry-leading fit, finish, and performance. Progression is the name of the game with every new piece created. At FXR, we push our brand to the next level to provide you with the best products possible. Used by Muckoff FXR Club MX Yamaha team, Mike Brown, Brock Tickle, Chris Kiefer, Benny Bloss, and many more. FXR has core moto roots, so visit fxrracing.com or go to your local dealership to see the complete 2024 lineup. Tonight, FXR brings us Team Green's Drew Adams. What's up, Drew? Yo, what's up? How you guys doing? Doing good, man. Glad to finally get a chance to talk to you. Uh, we've never actually met, I don't think, but glad to get you on, dude. You've uh, you've had a pretty stellar last month or so of racing. Uh, yeah, I've just um, you know been traveling around and uh, trying to do my best lately, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's all working out for me. And uh, we're just working every day and uh, trying to get ready for what's to come, you know. Yeah, so you you win Supercross Futures, obviously at Daytona, um, and then you go to Freestone and win the win what the Open A Pro Sport and 250A. Uh, you know, you're you're getting all your you're checking the boxes like you're supposed to. Do you feel like there's what do you feel like you need to keep working on to improve though before the next Futures race, which is coming up in St. Louis, I believe. Uh, you know, I'm just really trying to just, uh, just do what I've been doing, you know, put the laps in and stuff. And, um, obviously I was out in Texas for a while and, um, got a little bit used to outdoors. So the past, past week or so, just trying to bit, trying to, uh, get back in the supercross grind and, um, you know, just clicking laps every day and, um, hopefully, um, uh, we'll be ready for the race. What's the, what is the part of supercross well first of all how does do you feel like futures is a really good program to to help you prepare i know it helps you you know you kind of go to the stadium you see what the program is like the schedule for the day uh you're riding a lot of supercross when you're training but do you feel like this new supercross futures program is very beneficial to you yes i definitely think it's um it's a great way to um uh, just get prepared for pros and stuff obviously us amateur A riders are definitely looking forward to going pro, and um, hmm. most most of us that are racing the Supercross Futures have never raced Supercross. Yeah. So it's um, like it may look a little wild, you know, and stuff, but uh, it's definitely one of the best experiences you could have as a pro amateur rider at the moment. For sure. Yeah, yeah, Drew. With the with the difference in you know, you went to Daytona and it was you know one of the ruddiest Daytonas has ever been. And you you found a way to dominate there, and then you go to these Spring Nationals that you just done, and and it's it's a different kind of rough because of a sheer volume of riders rather than intensity of riders like you find at doing the futures program. Uh, kind of compare and contrast the the difference between those and and what you like and don't like about either of them. Uh, yeah, so, um, definitely the whole, definitely all the fast kids and the pro amateurs were uh, at Daytona lining up that night, and I mean, that was 22 of the best amateurs right now, and, um, yeah, then we went to Freestone, and a lot of, a lot of the kids don't, don't, uh, want to, like, go there for a whole week and, you know, just waste a week without Supercross riding, but, um, there was still, there was still a few, few there, but, um, I think that a lot of the gate, you know, just stayed back and kept training for Supercross instead of uh, going out to Texas and racing. Is that why you skipped Springeding for to get back to Supercross? Yeah, yeah. I just um, I was I was already because we had already um, the RCSX is kind of motocrossy a little bit. I mean, it's a little Supercrossy, but more motocross just because mm-hmm. it got so rough this year. So I was already on outdoor suspension for that and stuff, and then. Um, Obviously, racing six twenty-eight minute motos at Texas. I just got a little used to outdoors, so um, I need to get back in, and start riding on some SX again. Yeah, and, and I was I was kind of thinking about like the the tracks too. What was the difference between racing like a like a pro rough track and then the amateur you know amateur rough track where there's just so many bikes on it? Uh, I mean, definitely the pro track was more difficult. You know. Uh, you would you would think that it would not it would be such a big difference just because of how many more bikes are on amateur day and uh, stuff like that. But I don't know, the pro day was tough. That was, <laughs> that was tough. So, um, but I mean, also amateur day was really tough too, just because of the 
soft dirt that was in Daytona from the night before and the rain that we had a little bit. But um, just with the pro day having such more tougher obstacles and stuff, that was definitely the uh, harder part. Right, uh, Drew, are you are you training at the dog pound? Yes, I okay. do train at I train at the dog. Pound. Yeah, I thought so. So. Um, I know Dan Truman's kind of on your, you know, in your, in your corner and I, is Mertz your agent? Uh, no, no, okay. I don't, I don't really have an agent. Okay. Kind okay. Of, uh, yeah. Okay. But you do work with those guys a little bit. So I would assume being around the group of guys that ride out there that you're just picking up stuff every day. Um, what surprises you? or what has surprised you the most riding with guys of that level that are, have made the next step to the pro level? Um, I mean, there's obviously when I first came down here about a year and a half ago, it definitely surprised me a lot now, but, um, you know, now it's just kind of, I uh, just do my laps with the boys and stuff. And, um, obviously watch jet hunter, you know, they're one of the best, you know? So, um, I just try and watch them every day and then, my my actual training partner is Chance Hymas, and I yeah. ride with him every day. And he, um, you know, he he's definitely a little bit quicker than me, so it's it's always good to go off him, and then he goes off Hunter, and then Hunter goes off Jet, and you know, it's just we just really all try and make ourselves better, you know, whether it's on the track or off the track. Sure. Okay. Let's let's take that for a second. You just said that your training partner's Chance, and he's a little bit better than you, probably in certain areas. So what's an area that you see regular and you go, okay, this is where I need to be better. And this is how I need to do it. Like, do you have an example of that? Like, okay, this is what I'm going to work on this week or the next couple of weeks. Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. You know, chance is just, he's overall a little bit better than me, you know? And uh, I think that, uh, I mean, I can't really pick one spot, but okay. um, definitely just like the corners and, you know, he's a little bit, uh, Cindy and the rhythm stuff, but um, you know, I'm I'm working on it and slowly getting closer and closer, and obviously he's getting faster and faster too, you know. So um, he he really helps me a lot, and um, hopefully I can help him one day, you know, just getting right up on him and we'll battle. I mean, we we do battle now, but he's still got a little bit more raw speed than me, so uh, I'm trying to get you know closer to him, and then obviously closer to the 450 guys absolutely i love it yeah good job good deal all right uh so if everything goes pretty well this year uh after loretta's do you have any plans of trying a few auto rounds um i mean i haven't we haven't really talked about it much i mean obviously that that would be sick you know it'd be definitely the best experience i've had yet but um hopefully you know everything goes well i just keep doing what i'm doing you know um, stay in this good spot. You know, this is the best I've felt in a while. So um, we're just going to uh, keep clicking off these futures. And um, obviously we have the combines this year and stuff. And um, hopefully I can just keep, you know, being on the top at those races and uh, maybe something will come around. Yeah, because you did do some combines last year, didn't you? I feel like I, you were at Ironman. Yeah, I've done – so I did a – the Ironman Combine in 2022, like I just got on big bikes mm-hmm. and um, kind of rushed it a little bit. I didn't do very good. I was still a little kid and stuff, but um, you know, I did the last, I did the two combines last year, Red Bud and Ironman, and uh, they went all right. Red Bud, I had a crash in the second moto and kind of set me back a little bit, but um, Ironman was okay. I just needed to work on my starts a little bit. I mean, I was definitely one of the faster guys out there, but, um, I just had some bad starts and I ended up second at that, at that one. But, um, I definitely could have uh, done, done better than that. I I think that right there starts, that seems to be these days, it's always been critical, but more so I feel like in this generation than in the nineties when I was like, you know, younger starts are almost everything. So I, I feel like if you can nail those down, obviously it gives you so much more opportunity to be at the front and, and you have the speed and the skill, it seems like, um, to get there. So yeah, the starts are going to be everything. So do you, how much focus do you put daily or weekly into starts? Um, I mean, I definitely, you know, I practice starts every day or every other day, you know, but, um, I would definitely say that starts are nine, 95% of the race, you know, yeah. Get, just now because the whole field is just so close and it's like 
everybody's so quick and so intelligent that like it's hard it's hard to go through a pack of uh, full field now. So um, I would say that starts are probably the most important thing, and mm-hmm. uh, I definitely put a lot definitely put most of my work into it. All right, Drew Adams tonight, brought to you by FXR. All right, hey bud, I got a question about your bike. Um, yep. You guys have some pretty sweet bikes. Mitch makes some really awesome bikes. So what is your favorite part about the bike? Like it could be a part. Um, it could be the way the bike handles certain suspension, situations. Suspension, engine, yeah. yeah. I'll probably say the front forks, I'd say. Forks, those yeah. Are, those, are most, those are most important on Supercross. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's probably made the first biggest forks. difference between from your – what your old bike to the to the race bike, I guess the the f- suspension. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um. Oh, go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, Sorry, I just I just had a one that was on the same topic. So, um, I remember you being one of the the main guys that was like you were killing it on the super mini, and I know that Cowie hasn't done a lot of development into that that bike, the eighty five, the one twelve, whatever it is. Um, uh, I know that it hasn't really changed a lot over the years. Um. Now that you're on PC, I'm, I'm assuming that was the, the ultimate goal was to set yourself up for that program. At any point, did you ever consider switching to a brand that had a, a more modern uh, super mini bike or how, kind of take us through how that, that all went down? Uh, I mean, I never fully considered that. You know, I just, I didn't try and stay on uh, super mini too long. I just, I knew that obviously moving up to big bikes is probably the best decision. I'm moving up to big bikes quick, at least is probably the best decision I've made. You know, so uh, it definitely made me a lot stronger. And so I never really considered that. I was just like, get through it, get through it. You know, uh, mm-hmm. just make it as quick as possible, and then uh, get on the two fifties and make me a lot stronger. And uh, yeah, it was def- definitely a smart decision, just because uh, sets you it sets you up a sets you up a little bit better for uh like what's to come and um you know i've always been racing older kids and uh, i've always been one of the younger ones so um i've been used to moving up early and stuff so that's just what i did uh just a few more questions for you drew you you raced and won the 250 all-stars at uh la the la coliseum last year for super motocross how was that experience obviously winning is great but just overall stadium it's a little different than futures it's just a different environment. A lot of kids ate some shit on that track. That was pretty, some gnarly sections. Mm -hmm. How was that night for you just as a whole? Uh, it was definitely a cool experience. You know, I don't, everybody, all the older guys that I know were saying it was sick to race at the Coliseum and stuff, but I I don't really know much history about it. All I know is, uh, Brian Deegan goes through his bike. That's really all I know about it. But it was a sick experience. You know, that was, they don't they don't call it a futures, but that was probably my first futures experience, you know. So um, it definitely set me up good, and um, it was sick to come out and win it. But I would I would honestly say that the Anaheim two track and the Daytona track were probably more difficult than the LA track. Mm, okay, I mean the LA track the LA track was difficult, but it was I mean it was part of an SMX round, so it was a little bit little bit outdoory yeah you know like the rhythm sections weren't like steep and at both the futures rounds this year they've been rutted up and stuff in the mains and um we didn't really have that it was just, we had a we had a fresh track for our main i'm pretty sure we raced like before all the heat races and stuff right so um yeah i would i would definitely say that that track wasn't that gnarly okay all right. it, was, it was still tough but the and I and two and Daytona rounds have been been way gnarlier than that. Gotcha. Hey, yeah, Drew, you you know you kind of mentioned that you you were trying to get on the big bike quick. If I'm not mistaken, you were were you you were the kid in that that video that went real viral where you they're like, oh, if you can start the 450, you can ride it, but it had electric start, and then you you took off and where you were like, I mean, you were still on 60s and and you were riding a 450. That was you, wasn't it? Yeah, that I mean, that was, I, I think I was yeah, I was. 10 years old and that was a long time ago you know it's just a back at the old compound it was just a training day and i just asked asked this guy if i could ride his 450 and uh, he was like yeah and then matt went on to go like you can start you can ride it yeah that's awesome so i hopped on it and did a few laps but i mean that was 
that was that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just we yeah. were, when he said you were going to be on the show tonight, and I was like, that was the, that was a kid that was yeah. that because that video went, I went pretty that viral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I want to ask you about expectations and pressures at such you know at the at the amateur level. There are you're a young kid, man. In my eyes, I'm an old man. Um, so, but there's a lot of expectations when a team like Team Green puts their stock in you and you know they want you to win they want you to do well how do you and maybe i'm wrong maybe there aren't maybe they don't put any pressure on you but do you feel pressure from the you know the expectations and if so how do you deal with that who's in your corner helping you with those kind of things um yeah so i mean obviously there's always pressure when you line up on a gate with 42 or 22 guys so um I really just try and block it off as, as much as I can and uh, just think as it think of it as another day at the compound, you know, just training. And um, But, I mean, I definitely have, like, my team manager, Ryan Holiday, and then obviously Dan Truman and my trainer, Michael Byrne, and my parents, you know, everybody's, everybody's on my side when uh, stuff goes wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I know what Team Green needs me to do, and uh, I know that I can do it for sure. And um, you know, I just try my best every time I'm on the track. Okay, how is it working with Dan? I know Dan a little bit, and uh, he's intense, but he's very passionate and has a lot of connections where he, to get help. And obviously, you know, with uh, he's really knowledgeable with ECUs and all that. Just how how is it working with Dan Truman? Oh yeah, I mean it's good. He's helped me out ever since I uh, moved down to Florida a couple of years ago, and. Um, you know, he's been a big, big, big factor in the last few years and uh, just helped me out at all the big events, you know, like these futures and the combines last year and Loretta's obviously mm-hmm. and uh, definitely, definitely a good guy to have around. But I'll also say that my trainer, Michael Byrne, has probably helped me the most out of everyone, you know, he's out there with me every day, you know, me and Chance just clicking out laps and um, obviously telling me what I need to fix and stuff and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Well, you got anything, anything that we can make fun of Truman about though? I mean, you know, donut boy, I don't know. You got anything that we can <laughs> give him some shit about? Oh, dude, I, I'm not for sure. I don't really, <laughs> I can't put him on the spot like that. All right. That's fair. <laughs> He'll, well, well, I'll, I'll have to make fun of him on my own then. All right. All right. You do that. All right, Drew. Hey man. <laughs> Glad you came on here. Appreciate your time and uh, look forward to seeing you at some upcoming rounds, man. Uh, Good luck and we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'll see you guys. Okay, buddy. Take care, Drew. Yep, bye. That's Drew Adams brought to you by FXR tonight. Uh, Man, one of the futures of the sport. It looks like he's he's got some skills. Um, I, the little bit that I've seen of him, he's he's done some of the futures and I I believe uh, last year he was... When they did the second round of the SMX championship, he was At Charlotte. Yeah, he was still on. He was still on the super minis, right? I'm not positive. I'm, being honest. I'm pretty I'm sure he was like, in that yeah. that class with Wayne. He, okay, he's he. It seems like he's capable of putting on dominating performances. So yeah, I'd be curious to see how how he trends going up and getting to the pros. And he's getting used to it early. So you know, uh, we were talking earlier about like it looks like. Uh, um, Jets on are going to go on a run, so we need guys like Drew to to have that dominance gene to come up. So, well, you know, it should be interesting. Yeah, I've seen Drew ride, and man, I, I tell you what, he has such a fluid riding style. Yeah, I, I think being down there with the, the the Lawrence brothers has really helped him out on that aspect. Yeah, and uh, being a redhead in motocross doesn't seem to hurt either. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, let's jump into the troll training top five. Riders such as Grant Harlan, Jeremy Martin, Henry Miller, and Jason Anderson all trust troll training because it is the culmination of a combined three decades spent in the trenches of the professional sports scene, refining training methods, learning, absorbing, and training alongside some of the best in the business. Alex Martin and John Wesley have expert guidance in helping you navigate the many nuances of training, including periodization, endurance, strength, and conditioning, riding technique, on-the-bike structure, nutrition, and more. Guys, again, I say this every week. If you're even considering, especially if you're an older guy like me, I mean, I'm about to be 49, I think. I've lost track at this point. Yeah, 49. And going to the gym and pedaling has, has really helped me feel better day to day. And, of course, it would help also if you're a younger guy, but more so as you get older. And troll training has given me some structure. I didn't really know what I needed to do. And thanks to John and Alex, every day or every week, I get a schedule of, hey, do this today, do this today. 
And then they communicate with me and say, hey, you know, how are you feeling? Oh, let's change this. Let's back this down. Let's ex- let's up this. Uh, it just really helps. Check out trolltraining.com. You can look at the different packages available. It's not completely impossible to find an hour a day somewhere in your schedule. Maybe it's not every day. Let them know what your schedule is. They will work with you. But it, it just, I promise you, man, it'll make you feel a lot better. At least look into trolltraining.com and and. Um, you know, try to get yourself in better shape. It helps with writing. Dude, it helps with... Day-to-day life? Yeah, just in day-to-day life. You know, <laughs> at night when you're hanging out with your wife or your girlfriend or your kids, you just have more energy. You feel better about yourself. It just, it really... Being better, healthier, and feeling better change, it makes so many di- positive changes in your life. I, I highly recommend it. Why are you still grumpy then? Yeah, it doesn't change personality <laughs> so much. I mean, <laughs> listen, bro. Just, chill down. Uh. Okay. We did not mention the top five list last week on what it was going to be. I didn't even make a decision until recently, uh, last couple of days. We went with, or I went with, top five things you miss kind of from the past that have been changed because of advancement in technology, et cetera. I gave like the example of maybe a landline where you yeah. don't have a cell phone and you can't always be gotten a hold of. Yeah. That was like an example. Um, does anybody want to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, y'all go good. first. Okay, I'll go first. So I put just in general, kids going out and playing outside. I was like going to put that as one of well, mine. You can still have it yeah. all day. Like you know, when I was a kid, a lot of times you went outside at eight a.m. and I, you didn't come home till dark. I'd get in trouble if I came yeah, inside. You, you yeah. didn't. Parents didn't know where the hell you were. Parents today would probably completely panic. But kids figured out who the hell they were. Kids had adventures instead of. I'm going to sit at home on my YouTube and chat with my friends. It just, to me, that's something I miss. Mm-hmm. I think kids need that. Um, I put Nintendo down and the idea of this is like the new games as I'm older, there's too many buttons, too hey, many It's controls. another one of mine. Really? Yeah. I, like I, the, I liked what, button two mashing, buttons, button two mashing, buttons yeah. and a directional pad. Thank you. That's all I need. Left, right, up, down, bro. Yeah. Simplicity yeah. in my video games. Yeah, I was going well the only thing I was going to have that too and what I was going to say was that it's like back then the, the video games were kind of an es- escape because it was like it was so unrealistic that it was just fun. It was like oh, yeah. it was like yeah, just Super go button Mario mash Brothers, but but now it's so realistic that the kids are like basing their lives off oh, of Oh yeah. Their, their, yeah, like yeah, it's, it's a job now like for they, some people. Yeah. yeah, some of these kids like imagine themselves as their like Fortnite oh. character and like, <laughs> you know, just, that might be some mental instability. Well, I mean, but that's what the yeah, world that's what the the, um, the nurturement of the world has given them. It's yeah. it's like they don't feel they don't know how to be themselves outside of what they are in the game. So, I think it's gotten too real for everyone's own good. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of going down the line of uh, like parenting yeah, like, like if you want to discipline your child for either biting, screaming, whatever in public, and you're, I was gonna do this. I don't know, probably about a year ago with my oldest, and I was l- literally looked up, looked around, say who had a who had a phone out, who's gonna record me, and then I was gonna be the yeah. next person that blows mm-hmm. up on the internet. And so I think that's probably uh, one of mine. I was at I was at my, one of my buddy's house uh, this past week, and uh, the 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 kids, the two kids, started fighting, yelling at each other. Uh, Dad came in there, n- nothing crazy, just with the belt, boom, boom, one each. <laughs> yeah. They stopped fighting. You know what? Yeah, I, 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 like, that's uh, sex- yeah. uh, some spankings probably should have been on my list. Like yeah. that's, uh, I, I, I'm not, I don't have an issue with spankings. Um, all right, let me finish up. I put going to the movies. People do still go to the movies, but mm-hmm. it's not the event it was. Like mm-hmm. Friday night and you're in high school or middle school. Hey mom, we're going to see the new whatever, you know, or yeah, it, that was like a big event. Now people are just like, oh, I'll just wait for it to be in my on my streaming platform mm-hmm. and like that was so much fun getting the popcorn and chilling out in the movies with your buddies or whatever is a big deal still happened some, but not like it was yeah. when I was a kid. So well, that, when, you, when you was a kid, popcorn was 25 cents. Now it's $8. Bro, it wasn't 25 cents. <laughs> Dick. Um, this is a big one for me. Physical albums. Yeah. I liked pulling out the, the card, the title card and like oh, reading yeah. the tracks and, and having that physical item. I still have a ton of CDs, but physical albums is a big deal to me. Now a lot of it's just download the newest single or I don't want this track. And like an album was an experience. This is a great song. Oh, I don't like the song so much, but I don't want to skip it because it's part of the experience. So it's just, so yeah, physical albums was big for me. Uh, and the last one I put is like social media 
now having social media hate negativity back in the day, Mm -hmm. you just didn't know, man. Like you didn't hear, you you saw the nightly news. Yeah. Maybe you read like a inquirer or people and got a little, some stories and you, that was it, bro. Like that's, you believed what you read in the newspaper for the most part. (laughs) You didn't have 10,000 people on there arguing about, Mm -hmm. no, this is the fact, or you're stupid if you believe this. So that's my list, man. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's a great list. I don't know if it's a great top five. Next week, top five comes per uh, Chris Woods, and we're going to go writers who pissed you off that you now like, who used to that you not like and that made you mad that you now like. That's our list for next week. Vital M, or no, Moto X Pod Show at gmail.com. Get your list in before next week of writers that you used to not like, and now you do. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead, Jeremy. All right. Well, you took a few of mine. That's I'm gonna, fine. I'm going to agree with the whole, you know, kids playing outside. Yep. Um, uh, video games, like I really think the video games causes some of uh, you know mental health problems, some physical health problems. Okay, kids yeah. are just yep. not interacting, you know, not being a kid, just stuck inside the room. Social, yeah. communication problems. Yeah, yeah, like sure. a, because you know when we're growing up, our parents were trying to give us everything we could to go outside. Well, even when we played video games, yeah, it was a room full of your buddies taking turns. Yeah, now it's people in separate houses playing yep. online with each other. And I guess they do still communicate a little bit right. through headsets, but it's not the same as, no. yo, Mikey, go get me a water, you know, or whatever. I don't know. It's just different. Yeah, to me, it's different. Yeah, especially when these kids are sitting in this chair for six to eight hours just yeah. gaming away. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, come on, man. And then yep. uh, I guess a, a decrease. How's the audio? Are we doing good tonight? Yeah, no, no complaints. New laptop, maybe we're good. Okay, yeah, awesome. It, I, it, I haven't seen any fire drills yet. That's awesome. It looks, yeah, it, I, from what I can see, it looks a lot Sweet. better. Yeah. Sweet, okay. I feel Sorry. like uh, there's a lot of uh, decrease in um, attention spans. Like there's, oh, for sure. Like, there's so many things these kids could get their hands on. Like, they Dude, don't know what toy they want to play it with. It affects me. Yeah. You got your phone. You got your, yeah. You got everything. I can't do anything without my phone. No. And uh, you just kind of, I guess you kind of forget about being a you know normal person mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis. And uh, I guess I kind of keep it old school in this one, small town. Uh, handshakes used to go a long ways. And now I just feel like that's kind of what time goes on. And there's hmm. new ways to sue people or whatever. Like, or not keeping your end of the deal. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought you meant literally just shaking somebody's hand no, when no, you no. say oh, hi. Wait, handshakes I, too? Yeah. I mean, because I still, I still get those a lot. Okay. But yeah. I'm with you now. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, I guess just people's word, words. like having people's your words. words or your word meaning something. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like that's kind of gone away with mm. the, the technology. And um, I was like, well, if it's not written on paper, yeah. I, I shook your hand on it, but it's not written on paper. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Is that your list? Yeah. I got a couple more, but I'll kind of hit on a couple of those already. Scotty, you got a list yet made up? Or Yeah. Um, I was going to say, uh, I think we all kind of have nostalgic of the same things, but yeah. uh, I was going to say just quality movies in general. That, oh, okay. And then music, too. I guess you can put that in there. Like, streaming services really have, they've ruined the revenue that, like, uh, VHS and DVD sales made, and that's what allowed those budgets of the movies to do what they want to do. Now everything's CGI. Same thing with music. Everything's digitally done and i just yep. the the true uh, artistic vision of a movie or a, or a song just i feel like is has declined and it's just it's just not the same and i that's one of them um like just the the fact of like brick and mortar shops like everything's online now see, uh, that's one thing i don't mind so much but see, I, I probably should I, I i buy like i go to motorsport for like my dirt bike stuff and like stuff that i have to buy online but i i, I like to go to you know the Dollar General or Walmart or whatever, mm-hmm. a store and, and go and like actually like shop and like, oh, I could use that. And I'm like, a, here, I see it. I want it now. Like, I don't really like the the, the online shopping okay. thing. I've never, never been big for me, but um, video games is one of them. Like, I kind of went already into that. Um, ve- vehicles without having like all these computer run things. Like, I've, it's nice in a way, like being able to hook up your phone and listen to music yeah. and until it goes show. until it breaks. Yeah. Well, we we just bought uh, a 2021 vehicle, and it like, dude, if I go 30 feet down the road, it starts telling me to put my seatbelt on. Yeah. And I'm like a big like out. I get out of the parking lot, and when I get going, I put on the seatbelt, and like it does not like that. Mm-mm. It starts screaming at you with the beeps and uh, just simple stuff like that. And like, I know the guys that drive diesels, they have to have uh, emissions. They have the emissions and I all of this, that. and like people will actually spend like big money on like an older uh, diesel vehicle or something like that, just because like it, everything's so. Uh, t- uh, tuned and I don't know. So that was one of them. 
Um, and then let's see, I don't, didn't really have a last one, but uh, I think we all agree on kind of. Yeah, the, that's fine. I'll, put, I'll do. I'll, I'll second you guys on like the parenting kids. Yeah, not being disciplined right or you know respect like just respect's gone and do you miss getting a newspaper or do you like reading on facebook yeah i didn't really care about i never really read the newspaper mm -hmm. wasn't a newspaper guy but canadian chris sent an email in with his top five on this topic and newspapers one of his uh scotty vhs dvd miss going to blockbuster mm -hmm. that was kind oh, of yeah. experience I, okay, I actually wrote that down and i yeah. scratched it out for going to the movies instead but mm -hmm. yeah um, we would do that every He's, every Friday, yeah. especially if we got. You try to get there early so you could get the new releases before they were yeah. all gone. Or if we uh, if we got A's and B's on report cards, Blockbuster would give you a free movie. Oh, I, well, I was I think I was already I was already out of school by yeah. then, really. So, uh, um, but yeah, we we did two movies and a video game every nice. Friday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he, he actually put yeah. early Nintendo systems. Uh, it's really early Nintendo systems with yeah. friends. He, he said early Nintendo system with friends. Yeah. It's kind of funny that we're all on the same page. And then he said the middle class. <laughs> he said, yeah, it's, I'll tell you one thing I don't miss roadmaps. Good point, Canadian Chris. Yeah. Uh, he gave us a couple of top five. Oop, let me go back. I, sometimes, like, I mean, obviously, I, I don't have a roadmap in my vehicle. I, I obviously use it on my phone, but the one on the phone kind of like, it'll be like, all right, in two miles, you take an exit. And then you like come, like, your exit, you just passed your exit. And it's like, oh, I never have that. Really. Yeah, I'm just an idiot. Uh, well, you have a droid, so it's probably, yeah. you can't keep up. <laughs> it's Google Maps. It's not droid's fault. <laughs> it, well, it's droid's fault that it can't keep up. Uh, he gave a couple ideas for upcoming top five list. Uh, Troll Train top five ideas, top five MX races. We did Supercross. Mm hmm. Uh, top five past or present outdoor tracks you'd like to see in national. He, he said Glen Helen Ken, Kenworthy's top five sports moments, non-moto, the immaculate reception, the catch Niners Cowboys. That's what I'll go with. He didn't put that down. 1980 miracle on ice <laughs> top five, a concerts attended. Ooh, I'd be all about that one. And top five places you'd like to travel to, which I think we've already done that one, but we, we? we uh, I feel like we did. Like I thought that was the first one, but. We could readdress it. It doesn't matter. Well, I, I think mean, we did do something like that. Yeah, but that. Oh no! You you said it was uh, like top five vacations that we oh, would take well, or something I mean, or something like not that. Not that different, but yeah. I mean, yeah, we could add that. Um, I think there was another top five list. Maybe that was the one I was thinking of. Uh oh, here's some more. Yeah, this is from Chris Wood. He said top five list: uh, race training, ways to relax. Riders that piss you off, but you lay their love. So that's what I uh, race training ways to relax is one. Sorry, it read it as two, but riders that piss you off, but you later loved. That's next week. Things that only exist to annoy people. Redneck innovations, gear brands current or past. Holy shit moments in racing. So not some bad ones. We'll um work on those. Uh, let's get to the Evans. You got anything else? I got a 49ers joke. Okay. Yes. Is yeah. It, I'm all ears. It, okay. Uh, let's go. Uh, why can't the 49ers work more than 40 hours? I don't know. Because they can't handle overtime. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, at least they can get to the fucking playoffs and the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah dude, you can't. You, can't, dude. I mean, yeah. I know. NFC Championship, you, you, buddy. You, you, How many I, years in a row? I see, I see what we're dealing with. Yeah. Just. Well, I'm Anyways. sorry that Cowboy fans, I'm sure you already yeah, believe I, you're going to win the Super Bowl next year. That's typical 49ers fan, get butthurt. I'm not quick. butthurt at all. I'm just pointing out facts, buddy. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't your <laughs> buddy, <laughs> guy. Yeah, we've been losing for like 20 plus years. We're used to it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Moving on. All right, well, Evans all Coolant, in, yeah. and Evans <laughs> coolant no emails. Evans Waterless Coolant protects your engine because it always stays liquid. Steam inside the engine creates hot spots and detonation, but with Evans, the metal is always liquid cooled. Used by HRC Honda, Factory Beta USA, and Pro Factory Yamaha, and lots of other teams, regardless of the sponsorship, Evans is in the bikes on the podium. All right, Evans coolant emails. Let me open these back up real quick, like. All right, I got some highs and lows. Got top fives. Top fives from Indy. We'll just throw this out. Well, we'll, we'll do Indy in a minute. Uh, uh, okay, let's see here. Phil Smeltzer. Uh got a couple things he just puts he's putting some thoughts out he says Eli has a, had a muscle rip injury his Achilles in last year he was always going to be up and down all year next year the beast will be back mark it down what do you guys think I don't think Eli comes back next year pretty sure he's done I don't even think he's doing outdoors I think he's done let's say he comes back for supercross next year yeah he's all in full training 
Can he come back to as good as he was last year, next year? Let's just go yes or no. Because we yes. got to get to Brandon here. Okay. I don't deep. think he's going to do that, but All yes. right, so much for yes or no. Deep down, yes, I want him to, but I just don't see it. Okay. I think if he makes his mind up to come back and race next year and go all in and there's no injuries, then absolutely he can still come back yeah. and be the best. As good as he was last year, I still don't know if it's good enough to beat Jet. I want to think it is, but... That wasn't the question, though. No, but I, I'm gonna, so I'm going to say yes. You're right. To, I, I even for, to that specific role. question, but yes. Now, he, there's like a million variables to that, but... Yeah. Well, but, all right, so if he does... Uh, let's just say he does come back next uh-huh. year. Do you think he should do the outdoor series to get get that um, ride time back under his belt that they, he's kind of missed it, out on? I don't think it would hurt to get, keep getting yeah. gate drops, but I don't think he's... I, keep the intensity I don't think him or Kenny are doing I mean, it outdoors anymore. I mean, because... I mean, he's, he's older now. He's, he'll be pushing 32 here pretty soon. I think him riding the outdoors would uh, keep him, I guess, keep his body moving. It yeah. wouldn't take so long to get it back up to go, back up going. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. But at the same time, those, like that season, and especially then, because then he would do, then he'd be obligated, not obligated, but prone to do the SMX. And then now he's done a, a 30 race series. And then, the momentum that he did build from getting that seat time, maybe now he's given him a little off time to really recover. So that would be my concern. But yeah, I think you could flip a coin on it on that either yeah. way. I'd say it does everything he could possibly do this year. Race supercross and call it, call it, just call it. Yeah. Just do it all. And then just be done. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I don't think he's racing outdoors. Oh, you must got some inside. Nope. Oh, Shane Bagley. <laughs> Shane Bagley, just <laughs> listen to the show. Inside of Dark Side. I won goggles. Just, he won the final, the, or uh, I think we did the picks. That's what we did. We we, we did the, the picks for Alabama. Nobody got it right, but since not, not that many people played, I said, we'll just pick one of these guys that did play to win, and you pick by numbers Shane Bagley. And we thought, oh, he's won a bunch. That's what we said, remember? Mm-hmm. He said, I won goggles. First time I've won. Y'all thought I've won before. My emails just get read a lot. Never won anything. <laughs> I think the other Shane, Borden, has won before, oh, and he's correct. okay. I got close, two or three on podium. Just didn't have Ken in the right spot. Sucks you're not coming to Indy. Uh, I was hoping you would be at the live pulp show. I was in Detroit, and you weren't either. I wanted to say what's up. Um, man, hopefully we'll say what's up soon, ba- Shane Bagley. I will get your goggles sorry, out. Sorry to the Shanes. Yeah, yeah. We'll get your goggles out. Um, I haven't done it yet. If I stay on me about that, just stay on me, but I'll, I'll try to do it tomorrow. Um, Tyler C. Hey, Dark Side, love the show and your co-host. My first job, except for Scotty, my first <laughs> job was also a paper route. I had about 200 papers to deliver each day after school. I was 14 at the time, and the reason behind needing to get a job was we were at a rate at a race at Baja MX on a 2003 RM125. Love that bike, and the transmission went out. My family grew up on the not so rich side with money, and in order for me to get a new bike, I had to find a job. Uh, yeah, all right, so I'm not going to go through everything, but. Uh, Killer, killer story there. Tyler C, fourteen years old, goes out and get a paper, gets a paper out to get his bike fixed. That's that's living right there, man. That's that's good work ethic. I love it. Uh, we got some more picks. Rich Tucker, do you find it a little funny when Hayden c- causes the first crash? Nobody makes hand gestures and throws a fit. We already actually talked about that. Uh, Hymas and Ansi didn't throw his bike off the pile. I think uh, should have apologized for causing the crash, but on the podium he never did. Just wondering what you guys thought. We kind of talked about that already, Rich, but yeah, really good um, email. Faith Williams, haven't participated in, participated in a bit, but I want to share my highs and lows from last Friday to today. Uh, her high was being able to see family I haven't seen in a few years. Eli winning the heat race. I just want that Eli to do what he did in the heat, but in the main, I just want him to win. Coop being within three seconds of Jet at the end of the main. Lowe's Friday, we had to put my third childhood dog down. Mm. She was about 12 to 13 years old. We had her for about 11 years. Uh, then Hayden's whole scuffle, Jet winning again. She gave predictions for Indy, Eli, Jet, Kenny. So, uh, yeah, Faith, it's always great when you reach out. Thank you. Shane Bagley got highs and lows. Yeah, all right. So, that's that on Dark the Side emails. Hates dogs. What's that? Dark side hates dogs. I don't hate dogs. I'm just not an animal person. I'm not, I don't want them to die. He hates dogs. <laughs> you, know what, who, you know what I hate? Me? Yeah, I hate you, man. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, all right, we got to get Brandon on. Uh, yeah, anything else while we get Brandon on? Um, you guys got any thoughts on any more top fives? Any, anything stand out to you guys that you've thought about? 
like as, as for for like segments like what would we do what would be a top five that you, you guys because you guys have never given me a list like i do everything what, what about like you guys uh, just show up and eat pizza what about like like uh, no that's dumb oh wait you haven't said it yet <laughs> <laughs> what was your idea jeremy <laughs> no, working on it <laughs> yeah what, what about what uh top five like uh roller coaster rides or like amusement park attractions <laughs> okay yeah. I, yeah, yeah I'm I, haven't I got, actually have a number one. For you, sure. you can you can be bucket list. Like, it doesn't have to yeah. be ones that you've done because okay. like there's a lot of ones that I've uh, won to write. You know what? Okay, I like that idea. We'll write that down, Scotty. That's the first good idea you've ever had. Since the talking. last yeah. time I had a good idea. But our next guest of the night's on, so we'll get back into that in a minute. He's going to be brought to you by Blood Lubricants. Do you think all oil is the same? Nope. Nope. Well, it's not. It's a bit like food in that you can have all the same ingredients, but a great chef will make something that knocks your socks off. Blood Lubricants was developed from over 40 years of knowledge in the oil business and is used by racers in the most grueling motorsports on the planet, including Baja, NASCAR, Indy, NHRA, Sprint Cars, Motocross, Supercross, and many more. Blood Lubricants has a reputation for lasting longer than other brands, is known to keep your bike running up to 30 degrees cooler. Check out Blood Lubricants. That's B-L-U-D, bloodlubricants.com. Use promo code VMX25. It's all caps to save. Tonight, Blood Lubricants brings us Brandon Hartrap. What is up, Heartthrob? <laughs> How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. It has been way too long. That's on me for not reaching out sooner. How have you been, man? Good. Just uh, just trying to get my life straight. And obviously, I started this business, uh, Alpha Motocross Dynamics with Cooper, and just been kind of take that and lead the way and, you know, get just honestly trying to work every week to make ourselves better, you know? Yeah, I definitely want to get into Alpha Motocross Dynamics. But, you know, we haven't talked to you – in a while since your injury and just yeah. how are you feeling? How is life? Has, I mean, you, I'm sure you're figuring things out. It's gotta be getting a little easier, but yeah, just like where are you, where are you at, man? Uh, so injuries are about as good as they'll be. You know, um, my back is, I wish I could show you some photos right now, but my <laughs> back is, uh, it's so offset and aligned. Like they couldn't get it as straight as they, the straight as they possibly could get it was pretty far off. But I mean, all in all, obviously, I'm quite grateful and thankful that I'm uh, not paralyzed. When I when I first got hurt, um, like my spine, it shifted into the spinal cord mm -hmm. and it pinched my spinal cord and split it. And I guess normally when that happens, you're you know you're paralyzed. And uh, like I had at the time, I was so jacked up, I don't know what what was left or right. And all these doctors coming to me, like coming coming to see me every day, and like they're like, "Man, you're a miracle." And I'm just like. Yeah, whatever. But now, like, looking back, I'm like, yeah, literally. But, uh, no, I mean, my back's doing all right. Um, it's when I'm on my feet a lot, that's when I, like, struggle bad. Um, it's like, I went to Daytona and then I went to south of the border for three weeks and I've been on my feet a lot. And that mm. literally just walking kills me the most out of everything. And then, um, cycling for, Working out wise, I've been trying to cycle, and that actually hurts me quite a bit, just because I'm hunched over. Yeah. But um, still struggling here with uh, <clears throat> my bowel movements, and um, still here and there I have a little bit of pain or just my my bladder be off. But um, all in all, the doing obviously great compared to what I could be. You know. Yeah, I think that's the way you have to look at it, or, or otherwise it's just going to eat you up. But has the pain decreased say in the last six months or is it kind of just, it is what it is. And it's going to stay that way. Probably. It's like, it's kind of just, uh, I mean, it's gotten like a little bit better, but like I said, when I'm on my feet, like when I was away for three weeks, I was so busy on my feet that like, then I feel like I'm back to like not square one, but like jacked up and, it's mainly when, when I'm off my feet and there's no, you know, pressure or weight on my back. I'm, I'm pretty good. It's mainly when I'm just on my feet, honestly. Um, yeah. I can be on my feet for a little bit, but when I'm consistently on my feet for hours, then like my, <laughs> like it's hard to explain, but my back will hurt so bad. Um, but like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm adapting to it in, uh, just the way my life is at the moment and hopefully it gets better. But, kind of scared when I'm older. Um, yeah, I hear like you. I'm 25. I'm still in good shape or whatever, but it's, I'm scared when I'm older for sure. Dude, I'm sorry, man. Like, ugh, I feel so, I don't even, there's, there's no words, right? There's no words I can say that can make you feel better, but it's just, 
It's, but I, I am so happy though that the miracle of you not being paralyzed did happen. I mean, that, again, you just have to look yeah. at the, take that positive and that's what you have to focus on. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I can sit here and complain about it every day. And <laughs> the only way I'm going to get better is myself. You know, yep. Yep. you can, you can, it's just for anything in life. You can sit here and the boohoos and this and that and reality nothing nobody can help you beside yourself you know and obviously grabbing a great family and everything and um stuff like that is great but in the end you're gonna have to get up and just fight through it absolutely yeah brandon it's you know it's encouraging to hear you say that you know how, how well you've you've progressed and taking it and you know dealing with like not being negative and looking for the positive things um uh, the little things in life that we take for granted um it's, it's crazy like when you especially you guys living in the professional supercross world like you know your your life is a little bubble and usually for the most part the idea is to at the end of the career you leave the bubble and you move but when it gets popped like that for or like and it's for you it's it's crazy man so props to you for handling it and, yeah. and just uh <laughs> glad glad that we're able to talk to you man i appreciate it yeah it's like my uh world got like i just got married everything was like yep. year before was great I just got married. Everything's clicking. And then, uh, bam, shit's just gone in the blink of an eye. And, uh, but it's just, not dude. It's it, it, yes, it is, but well, it's you not feel like, like it is. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, right. you're, you're Madison, your beautiful wife still with you. You're still married. You're still alive. Like, yeah, again, man, it, you're, you know, your friends are still your friends. And I think he was getting there. Yeah. 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 There. Sorry, dude. I just, I just <laughs> like, I don't want him to be like, it all went away. Like I don't want him to feel well, that way. That, that, that version of his life did, but he's, I guess, you know, dude. Oh, okay. Continue, I'll, shut, I'll, shut, up, I'll shut up. No, no, no. <laughs> I, you're not wrong. hundred percent. But like when I first got hurt, I had the, you know, a little brain injury. So I was, uh, I remember when I was in rehab for a month and then I had to do speech therapy and whatever. And, uh, I had all these other problems with my body to get fixed. So the best, my best scenario was to move. Be like, like I said, I felt like I finally, we found our place. I was in a good spot of racing and that's all I know, you know, done since I was three years old. So that's all I freaking know. And, uh, as soon as that all happened, uh, didn't know which way it was left or right. And, you know, I had to move back home. And that was a complete nightmare. Um, <laughs> with the move back home, I got like three surgeries at home. And then in the process of that, we were trying to buy a house. And then uh, it was just so many things you obviously a lot of people don't know about. But um, it, it was it was a roller coaster for a long time. I went to uh, counseling uh, quite a bit because I was struggling mentally. Mm -hmm. um, it was there's a lot of things, you know, people don't know about, but obviously nobody needs to know about, but, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really tough year, 2023. Like you just mentally and physically, and I still battle with pain every day. And like, um, I got a nerve conduction test about two months ago and I, and I already knew this, but I, I have nerve problems in my legs and stuff and my hands and, in you know, nothing that stops me from doing everyday life or, or, working out or whatever it's just numb it's not like but it's mm. not where i'm like struggling to walk like dude, if you saw me you'd be like you wouldn't even know i got hurt but um it's just i can't be there's no way in hell i could ever be an athlete again and um stuff like that but sure i don't know um the worst thing out of all is to, if you guys you know shit properly <laughs> that is awesome if you, I'm telling you the worst part of this whole thing is not shooting. It's, yeah. it's been a year and a half now and I have still struggled to shit. And it's like, when I have to go to the bathroom, it is like, it's kind of sad, but I'm like, it's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, dude, I think we all like That's, our good poop. That was so a, I, I get it. I, when I said the the little things on life, that yeah. was kind of what yeah. I was encompassing. That was, I'm telling you, you don't realize how great it is to shit until it's like you struggle every day. Like, man, it might you, it's uh, and I'm not even paralyzed, dude. So that shit, like, they got it way worse than yeah. me. But um, just the literally the littlest things in life is it means it adds up a lot. But of uh, course, yeah, blessed. And I went to Daytona, and that was uh, quite a bit of fun because I had like four guys racing pro 
and then I had some future guys, and I had stayed there for the next few days and um, amateur amateur days, and uh, I um, that was my first race back since of a Supercross race since 2022 of Salt Lake. So that was like it was pretty awesome. I couldn't believe how many people actually like seemed to care for me, and uh, like we were walking, it was me and my wife, like. I'd be trying to beeline here and there to go talk to my riders. And um, I, I get stopped so much. I was like, holy shit, dude. I didn't realize like this pe- many people care about me. So that was, that was a pretty cool feeling. Um, just, I, you know, like 2023 was so aggro and aggravated and upset and just like, not like fuck their bikes, but I was just like, just in my own little bubble. And then uh, we started this business and kind of opened my eyes up a little bit and mm-hmm. kind of starting to love the, love it again and the training and helping everybody like um I, I have a few guys that made the main event um their first main event in birmingham and when i tell you i have butterflies and i'm i'm not even there yeah i'm yeah. sitting here on the couch and they're in the lc cure heat race and i'm like i get more i no bullshit i get more butterflies than like when i used to race just by watching them because like it's a cool feeling i uh I don't know. I just Dude, I care for these guys I work with, and I uh, try my best. That that li- like warms my heart, lifts my spirits. Hearing that you have a passion for something, even even if it wasn't motocross, that you have something that you're like, this is awesome. You have that emotional feeling of butterflies, dude. I, that makes me so happy, Brandon. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's funny. Um, when was it? This past weekend, I have like my two guys. My main guys are Logan. You probably know Logan Lysel and Bryce yeah. Shelley. Yep, yep. And I had Bryce Stable. on the show last week. Yeah, he's a good kid, very good kid. But um, he made the he he made the main his first one in Birmingham, and so did Logan. So that was yeah. a great weekend. They're both and on that Dirt Bike weekend, Depot team, right? Dirt Bike Depot. Yeah. Yep. The whole squad made it, so that was yeah. Cool. And then uh, this past weekend, Logan rips the whole shot, or, or they're both up front in the first before they red flag it, and I'm like nervous as shit. And I'm, and they finally get out like one or two, and then they red flag, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then we go, they go back, and I'm like, you know what? I ain't gonna watch this start. So gate drops. I look up, fucking Logan hole shots, and I'm like, what in the world? And uh, so Logan was leading, and then Bryce was like right behind him, and Logan ended up like trying jumping something, cased it. Bryce cased it behind him. He flew off the track, and then Logan got so scared being in the lead, he like didn't ride to his potential so i was like it's little, but it's positive though like i'm their trainer so i technically like point out the positives you know mm-hmm. nice Roger. yeah so brandon uh, i got a couple questions for you you know now that you're uh, back on your feet you got your business going on have you had time to uh sit down and try to figure out a hobby for yourself outside of work <laughs> it's dude <laughs> uh it's tough because like that's the main i'm telling you that is the, like so when Speaking of that, when I uh, moved home, I was going to therapy like three times a week for three hours at a time because I had so many injuries. And then I like started getting better and uh, kind of, I kind of was still going to therapy very consistent. And I got a uh, part time job. My dad worked to literally kind of teach me what real world life is and just to keep my brain going. So I got a real job doing that. Like it, it was literally cleaning communities nothing crazy just kept me like i wake up at 5 30 a.m go clock in at six get off at two like i kind of loved it to be honest just kind of numbed the pain in my brain Mm -hmm. so then once i moved we bought the house once i moved to um florida then the band-aid ripped off because this was the first time i was alone with me and my wife and dude i started like i started going back on my little spiral of a hole being very upset. I'll be days where I'll be freaking tearing and crying. And then there's, uh, just stuff like exactly literally finding myself a purpose every day. And, uh, mainly now that the business is doing quite a bit better, um, for sure, more busy, uh, kind of like a dad now walking around the house, care of the house. And then I got two new puppies, honestly, to help my brain. And then a little bit of working out. I like, so I still go to therapy once a week. Um, and I still do some workout stuff that can, you know, benefit me and cardio stuff to really keep my brain active. But, um, when I go to help these kids or go to South of the border for a few weeks like that, I love that. So it's, 
it's for sure tough to find myself um, outside of riding. It's, it's tough to find myself like a purpose every day, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's reality. Work out and working out is um, saving me and um, my my two little puppies. <laughs> Yeah, I I got three kids and uh, I, I'm a real I got a uh, I'm a real I guess dog person and uh, you yeah. know the kids they bring me up and then my dogs they bring me up as well and uh, I'm glad that uh, you're doing a lot better. Yeah, it's uh I still dude I still struggle every day mentally and I don't say anything but you know it's I don't care to be open because I make our sport uh, everybody needs to after they're done racing they need to go to a therapist honestly because. Yep. Dirt bikes, man, the adrenaline we deal with, what we it, what we do on a dirt bike, it don't matter if you're 40th in the time qualifying, time qualifying in the first place. It's literally, motocross is like a drug. And when you lose it all and the adrenaline, you will never find adrenaline like you do on a dirt bike. So it's uh, tough. But going to therapy and find the little things in life that make you happy, it adds up, you know. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about Alpha Motocross Dynamics. You started this with Cooper Webb. How did that come about? Uh, you know, what was, how has it changed? How is it going? Um, so last year, about a year ago, um, I, Cooper, we made a little plan. This was when I was probably like six months out of being injured. And this is when I was with my parents. So he was in Florida. I live in Jersey. And he uh, made a little plan, plan to go visit him and look at some houses or whatever. And we stayed there for a week and, uh, he actually had the race at Atlanta. So like we came Wednesday and my wife and I, they flew out to, um, Atlanta motor speedway. We actually stayed there the weekend, watched the dogs, whatever. And, but the, the Thursday before he, he went golfing and I, I just went with him just to, I obviously didn't play. I just cruised around the golf cart just to, you know, watch him, whatever. Yeah, and I was to talking to him, I'm like, dude, yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, dude, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing in my life, you know. Um, let's be real, I'm not racing again. And uh, just, and he brought up this idea, and like, yeah, we can, you know, do this online program and kind of give back to the community, this and that. I'll, uh, you know, once I'm done racing, I'll jump right in with you. Um, but let's get started, and uh, you know, we'll do online and in person training. And the next day they had to fly out early and I t- talked to my wife about it. I'm like, eh, maybe. And then once the weekend, like it was, he was racing, it was like Saturday, Sunday. And I'm like, you know what? I can do this. So I jumped right on it. And as soon as I got home, I built us a whole LLC and, um, just kind of got my little group, like Christina, Denny and Chris have helped me so freaking much, helped both of us so much with this. And, uh, I've, crazy though when you make a relationship with certain with people and be nice it, it uh gets you a long way or far in life and um that's how that started and then once we started it was around october and something new not many people understood what it was and it's just with anything it's like word to mouth it takes time and mm-hmm. then um as, as each month has gone by it's gotten quite a bit better um, I've actually, since I went to South of the border, we kind of got a lot more people. So that was uh, a blessing. And I, um, I used to train at South of the border for seven years and I built a very good relationship with the owner. He used to take me racing and now I actually train his son. And if I was a pro, I wish I could have been at South of the border because those tracks are so gnarly. But, uh, yeah, it's just, just honestly, it's like, just being a good person, man, it, it can, it can really benefit you in life and, uh, just be, you know, grateful for certain people. I cannot agree with that anymore. Scotty. Yeah. Brandon with, you know, now that you're, you're doing the training and you've, you've been on the other side of that where you were the one being trained and how has it mm-hmm. been kind of, you know, obviously whenever you can step outside of something the from your normal uh, perspective or point of view from it, obviously you, you realize things that you, that were, you were incapable of realizing before. What's kind of some of those things that you've learned and that you're now helping with your guys that you're training. So it's really weird. Like two years ago, I was on the other side of the spectrum and I'd be the guy asking questions, this and that. And then now I got all these kids, these parents, like they come to me for questions and, at first, it 
it's not weird, but I wasn't ever in that stage. And now that I um, kind of went to south of the border and learned what it's really like to deal with parents and kids and what to tell them, it's it's honestly great. I, I, I love it. And for me to explain about technique and how to properly, like, tell somebody how to um, do a certain section or whoops, or I grasp it or I explain it so well that they understand easily. And it's honestly one of the best feelings to feel like uh, when I see these guys make progress in such a quick, short time, I'm like, all right, I actually know what I'm doing. So <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a great feeling. And, and honestly, I didn't realize, like, I didn't know how I was going to do, you know, I've never trained a kid in my life. And now I got multiple athletes that are very, some of them are very good, especially amateur, amateur kids. So, these kids are coming to me for guidance and questions and I have to know the answer like right off the rip. So I was always, you know, I was skeptical and even talking to parents, like I'm talking to 50 year olds looking at me, coming to me for questions mm-hmm. and answers. So it's like, it's different, but now I got a taste of it and, you know, learned a little bit. It's like, all right, I'm actually pretty good at this. So, nice. um, it's like I said, it was different. You know, I was, Oh, I, you know, you have some doubts and, and this and that but um honestly the best thing that i could have done was down south of the border and uh i don't like i'm not a trainer there i got my own thing there but mm-hmm. um ryan schaefer lets me you know work with his son and these other kids for futures and pros and um yeah but i've learned so much from the trainers i've had and um honestly i feel like i not saying i'm better at being a trainer than they are but i feel like i can relate way Mm -hmm. more proper than some of these trainers and uh i think that can take me not farther but i feel like i'll do i'll do you know decent like i can explain or meant like i went through it all i went through it mentally physically i understand how to hit wolves to my feet i understand what to do with the throttle with the weight like there's a lot of things some of these trainers have not even gone through that they can't explain that so um yeah i i feel like i uh excelled way better than I thought I was going to. I'm not trying to be conceited, but I, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's great, dude. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just glad that you found this and you have a passion for it. And obviously you're going to be good at it guys. Alpha motocross dynamics.com. Check it out. Follow Brandon on Instagram. If you're not already get all the info. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm glad that you have this man. And yeah, you and coop, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be something special. It's cool. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, of Thank course. You. Uh, I asked you to give, you know, maybe think of three things that have yeah, stood out this year at Supercross. So yeah, let's let's see what your three things have, that stand out are. Well, I think everybody's number one is uh, Jet Lawrence. Uh, who? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like I, honestly, I talked to somebody about Seth Rarick about this yesterday. I was like, Seth if, doesn't know shit. Dude, yeah, yeah, get him on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he jet literally i was like Seth, dude if he wins this year like i feel like this year everybody's still coming with their elbows up trying to like rough this kid up mm-hmm. and he's just working everybody and um yeah I, I i think after this year if he wins both titles after this year it's just gonna be like okay jet's gonna win who we battle on for a second you know what i mean yep. so he's it, as a racer like i the, the, how fast and good this kid is it's like i don't i don't even know man it's it's so freaking impressive um but and he's 20 years old he didn't even fully develop it yes. he ain't even a grown ain't even a man yet no we were talking this was like one of our opening talk topics at the beginning of the show and i said you know we've heard the oh could he get to the 72 wins I'm like okay he's got five wow, al- at this point yeah shit. he's got five already this year rookie year seven races ago we all agreed he'll probably win four more so let's say nine or ten, if he averages eight to twelve a year, which I feel like at this point is possible. Pretty doable. Yeah, it's scary, and I'm like, I'm like I like Jet, but I don't want this dominance. That just that's not fun. I, I want at least three guys that can realistically win every weekend, and I feel like we're about to lose that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I literally have it written down here. It's honestly almost boring to watch racing. It's. it's like, uh, it's getting there. And he makes it so freaking look. He mm-hmm. makes it. This is the problem with people is like, which you guys know, but 
these spectators like, dude, if you get top 15 to top 10 in the 450 main event, you're a bad fucking dude. Yeah. And get going out there, just crushing the competition, getting first and making everybody kind of like dumb. Meanwhile, <laughs> like, dude, everybody's going fast as shit. It's, it's tough. Like he just makes it so it looks so easy. And, um, he's, dude, he's so damn good. And honestly, I think why he's so good is, you know, knock on wood, like dude hasn't been hurt. And yep, yep. he broke his collarbone. That's the only thing that's happened to him. He's won how many championships in a row at this point? Yeah, for five. him, the sky's the limit. There's no – he has had not one injury to drag him down or make him think, you know, negative. Like, the dude has literally just gone to the moon at this point. So, I, it's pretty – kind of a no-brainer why it's so dang good. Like, yeah. dude, I remember me and him, I was on TLD. We straight up battled. Iron Man for a podium overall, and I ended up I beat him both motos, and now this kid is literally he's just he's he's not even human at this point. See, you saying that also brings me back to a, a part of our conversation earlier. It's like eventually, if it's not already, guys like Cooper Webb and Eli Tomac and Chase Sex are gonna be like, wow. I mean, like I they're gonna they're gonna start. It's gonna be in their head. Like I don't know if I can beat this guy, and then at that point, you can't really beat that guy. Like it's eventually going to get mm-hmm. to like the McGrath era where everybody lit, lined up. I'm like, yeah, I mm-hmm. guess we're racing for second tonight. And that's not good. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be that. And, and to be honest, this kid's reality is only going to get better. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. When, he, right. when he starts first or second, even start, even watching him in outdoors last year, I was just kind of like, ah. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, they literally like, dude, it's, this weekend you like, he went to the first turn eighth and every time came out top two. He found that window. Like he had it dialed. Like, yeah. And he just, the dude makes his life easy, honestly. Like he does his job so dang properly. At times he crashes, but, um, like the other thing is people haven't seen yet. Like when he even gets a, if he's like 11th or 12th first lap, dude, he is so gnarly through the pack. He will still go up and uh, possibly win. So, it's not like, oh, he, you know, needs a bad start. Like, dude's still nasty when he gets a bad start. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Brendan, from your <laughs> like everybody, oh, sorry, go just good luck, good luck, Gary. Lee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> you know, from from a, a guy in your from your perspective, that's that's rode at that level. Um, what when they, you know, obviously his game plan has been, you know, get a three or four second gap and hold it. That's not like that's a new game plan. It's just nobody's really been able to execute that. From you know, from your vantage point, have I'm sure you've been in a position like, okay, I, 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 I've, um, let me hold this gap. How hard is that in reality to actually do? To the hold, like uh, yeah, to, to get like, it, like grow the gap to like three or four seconds. And like okay, uh, three or four seconds, I'm gonna hold it here. Just maintain it. Yeah. Oh my god, especially <laughs> outdoors. Shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's tough. Like, I mean, like I was never a jet or anything. I was, I mean, I was solid on a dirt bike, but it is tough when you are exhausted and just, you know, hanging on by a limb and you still got to hold a guy off that's on your ass. It is one of the most toughest mentally things you will go through. Um, but like for me, like I wasn't the fastest jet, the jet is the fastest. So like that dude, if you watch, if somebody catches him, he's, he literally will just next lap. He's gone by like another second and a half. Yep. So yep. he's at this point toying with everybody, like not toying with him, but like he's not even riding. Like, let's be honest. He's not riding his full potential mm-hmm. when he's, he's probably riding at like 90%, 95. It's that extra five to 10% that he honestly hasn't shown. And some of the races he has and qualifying, he has, he's been like top, like at least qualified first quite a bit, but I still don't think, You've seen his full true potential, but yeah, it's uh, we're me and him are in two different spectrums. Uh, <laughs> I was always just trying to, you know, like because he's the fastest guy where I wasn't, so like I was always fighting to where he's toying right now. He's just doing little yogas, mm. so he's can he's literally setting the tone of the race. Yeah, if that yeah, makes sense. it does. All right, what's your what's your next one? I was I'm pissed off about this one. This is like the whoops. <laughs> Oh, when I yeah. raced in 2022, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. Those were some of the biggest whoops. And you can ask anybody that's in the 450 class that still races. The whoops in 2022 were so 
damn big, and that was my last year. And now the whoops are like, dude, like they're disintegrating. I don't. I mean, I don't know what the whole objective was with that, but um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that actually earlier. I, was, I asked the guys about whoops, and like, I wish. I don't know how they do it. I want to see big whoops that stay together. I don't. Whoops should not be jumpers ever. They're, that's not whoops. That you you need to blitz whoops in my opinion. Um, that makes whoops. I don't really like the nine max limit on whoops, but just overall they got to be bigger and they got to stay together. I don't know how to fix it, but well, that's what we need to have. What's the objective of even? Why do we have whoops at this point? You yeah, know what I mean, well, like, I, I, it's, every race has been jumpers I don't, I don't think there's one race where i was i saw a consistent skim line nope um it's been that way for a while and then yeah i i and like here's another one i, I wrote down is like okay when it rains um i'm reading what i wrote yeah, that's fine <laughs> so here's the other thing this year i feel like the domes like they need domes like i feel like half the season so far has been like wishy-washy with this rain um, I feel like a lot of stadiums are just open and they haven't really raced in domes yet. And right. like it's supposed to downpour this weekend. And yep. for instance, Birmingham, like they literally took the whoops out and it, and it ended up not even raining or, you know, <laughs> what it was supposed to be. And, and like, I've never seen a supercross when there was legitly no whoops, honestly, like there's been mutters where they'll somewhat fix the whoops, but they literally made it as doubles. Yep. So they're doing some weird shit. I don't know. Why I'm not really in it to know, but um, I don't know. I just like it's it's the same thing with football. I feel like um, the tracks are easier. And football is like flags and penalties and everything. And like back then, if you watch an interview with Brady, he even says like nowadays everything's softer. And you know, there's, there's just everybody's different nowadays. I guess. You yeah, know? I feel like they're dumbing everything down a little bit. Yep, I I, I agree. I think those were I think those were good. Uh, points that you've you know brought up i think some of them like we said we yeah. already talked on so i i agree with you brandon dude this has been fun man it's really been nice catching up with you and i, I really am happy for you that things are going better i know they're not ideal but they're a lot better than they could have been and i i you know i've always enjoyed talking to you and having visiting with not you sure. so yeah it's, it's i'm glad to have you back on here man it's uh it's tough like just because i'm not paralyzed like yeah it, here's the problem with people is uh you know, because I wasn't paralyzed. Oh, he's fine. It's like, no, oh, dude. Yeah. I have so many goddamn side effects that nobody fucking know about. And mm -hmm. like, and everybody will compare other injuries to mine. I'm like, dude, it's not, it's so you, you, you're literally, you just sound dumb at that point. Like everybody's injury is different than each other's. And, um, I don't know. I just try to block out certain people and you know, a, uh, I don't know, but, yeah, I just uh, just kind of keep doing my thing and trying to get better, and it's uh, just trying to take care of my wife, my two puppies, and um, hopefully this business keeps, you know, we keep climbing and elevating, and uh, we'll see where it brings us in the future. You never know, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to hearing from you again. We'll stay in touch. Alpha com. Check it out. Uh, follow Brandon. Uh, dude, again, great talking to you. Um, thanks for coming on here. I appreciate you guys. You guys have always been uh, super nice people, and uh, thank you for having me on. You got it, buddy. Brandon, we'll talk to you real soon. All right. Take All care, right. guys. All right. See you. It's Brandon Hartraff brought to you tonight by Blood Lubricants. Really good to catch up with him. Um, okay. Want to get into procs highs and lows? Are we ready for that? It's your, show, it's your show, man. It's, 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 our, it's our show, bro. I'm just – all right. <laughs> Pro X is rooted in racing from motocross to off-road and supporting teams such as Ampro Yamaha, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and SLR Honda. They have been supplying quality components for almost 50 years, from complex jobs like an engine rebuild to simple maintenance, including filters, chains, sprockets, and sprockets. Pro X aims to bridge the gap between OE quality and affordability. Find Pro X at your local dealer or visit proX-USA.com. You can also find them on Instagram. Um, if you look at my Instagram, if you follow me, I just posted, I think yesterday or the day before, I got chain sprockets and some oil filters from those guys. Reached, so I sent out get some stuff that I needed for the Yamaha. Came right away. ProX.com. Highs and lows. I'll go ahead and knock mine out real quick. And we got a couple from some listeners. Uh, my high is that I'm starting to finally feel better. My ribs aren't hurting right now. I think I can ride Thursday. And I'm really excited about going to California. Getting to go hang out with Amber finally. It's been a while. 
So that's my highs. Uh, my lows, my daughter had a surgery yesterday. She's okay, but it, it just kind of sucks seeing her suffer a little bit and be uncomfortable and be in pain. And uh, that's, that really sucks. Anybody that has anybody they love knows that. And uh, yeah, just the fact that I haven't been riding has been a low and Jets dominance is a low. Those are mine. Scotty? Um, I will say that my oh, my low Brandon just sent me a picture of his spine the x-ray it's awful Ooh. yeah it's bad well, I'll show you guys afterwards I'm not going to post that and if he wants to post it it'll be up on his social but um, anyway I'm sorry uh, my lows were is is just I mean I know it's I know it's not um, it, it's it was typical of Indianapolis to have like the kind of rutted de- uh, degraded track but and I know that's, that that was expected but at the same time like this this year has just it seems like every track has been that I've yeah. I've watched a I watched a race from you know 10 15 years ago and it was like hard pack and almost dusty and like they were scrubbing and they were going so fast yeah, I think you said what oh uh, it was like oh nine, oh nine yeah Houston? but you can yeah. go, go watch some of those oh, like yeah, sure. I, I challenge our listeners to go watch yeah. even from like 12 or 13 like it, I don't know the evolution of the 450 I guess any anyways that was my low is just seeing a a rutted track where we're not seeing like full speed racing. Mm-hmm. Um, I say my high is uh, I want to say, I'm going to use the same as I did in my clutch performance. I want to say um, McAdoo uh, getting it, getting the win, taking the championship point lead. Uh, Mitch Mitch Payton and the Pro Circuit team leading both championships. That hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, just kind of cool to see see PC get uh, for now have the red plates. Okay. I got a Jeremy? few personal highs. Well, uh, first one is uh, first time me and the wife got to go out after eight months with no kids. Yep. Um, got to go do, you know, do some grown-up stuff, I guess you could say. Uh, <laughs> bow, chicka, wow, yeah. wow. Dip, dip in the <laughs> you dog. You know what that means. <laughs> dip yeah. in the dog. <laughs> and then uh, got finally got on the group chat with you guys. The load. Yeah, I went ahead and added you. <laughs> Oh, Even but, like, you, but you have to be disgusted by the green oh, bubbles. It's so bad because I have green bubbles. Oh, I know that was I mean, just, that's the low. Certain green things, certain things low. don't but work. That's what I, I mean, told them. Green, green bubble lives matter. Yeah, they don't though. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that really wraps up. I, I've had a pretty good high on the week. So <laughs> was, your, was your low a green the green bubbles? <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, yeah, I've had an yeah. exceptional five seven days, yeah. and uh, I haven't had a low. So oh, my my granddaughter turned three. That was a high. Her birthday. That was cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that was good. That's real awesome. All right, Shane Bagley Your sent. Grandpa? Yeah, bro, I'm a, I'm a pops. <laughs> Your pops. pops. Shane Bagley sent in, uh, and Bama is over, and it's Indy week, so this is leading into Indy. Highs. I'll be attending Indy. He did go. Uh, live pulp show Friday night and Triple Crown Saturday. Those were the highs for last week. Uh, and low track design at uh, Bama. I would assume, obviously, swing and a miss on the rollers. Whoops, would have been fine. Uh, that's from Shane Bagley. Uh, oh, he sent another one. So maybe I, maybe I read that one last week. I'm not sure, but uh, he sent another one, a current one. Highs getting to chat and get AC's autograph in the pits. Rumors are he will retire. Such a nice dude. I never fully appreciated his career until he was uh, while he was younger. Guy's the best. A great human. Low when Jed is on is on. It's painfully obvious nobody can touch him. He flows with the bike under him like it's a BMX race. Uh, it's like the bike is weightless. The boys better get a new ne- new level, or the next couple years are gonna be boring. Those are our Pro X procs, highs and lows. Let's get into the EVS picks for Seattle. And I'm, we, I told you it would be earlier we're going to do 250s this week just because we're going back to the West Coast. We'll uh, kind of change it up a little bit. I was actually going to – this is going to be the one week I just went ahead and picked Jet. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's, what, that's another reason. Let's just move on. But, um, all right. Over the past 39 years, EVS Sports has established itself as the leader in innovation and technology when it comes to designing protection gear for today's motocross riders. Athletes like RJ Hampshire, Kyle Chisholm, Freddie Norn, Axel Hodges, and Travis Pastrana all wear EVS when they ride, race, or whatever Travis decides to do that day. So check out evs-sports.com. Use the promo code VITALMX30, all caps, to save and gear up like the pros. Go check you out some of the new Axis Web Eclipse knee braces, or even just get you some of the TP199 or Slayco 96 knee guards. Love those things when I'm riding pit bikes. They're just really awesome. And even just for a minute, going back to the blood lubricants who brought Brandon and Hartraft in, you guys got to change your oil regularly. We all know that. 
Try some blood lubricants. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You'll be surprised at how much better it is. It is a little bit pricier, but just go try it. Use that promo code. Um, reach out if you need it. Blood lubricants, B-L-U-D, bloodlubricants.com. I trust it. I've been using it for years. I love it. Um, okay, EVS picks for Seattle, 250 West. I'm going to go RJ, Levi Kitchen, and March Banks. I think Garrett's going to be good. It is supposed to be muddy. Yeah. Garrett's a big old boy. Uh, he's been really close. He's had a couple of mishaps, but it's cost him some podiums. Mm -hmm. So that's my podium. Um, Scotty, what do you got for Seattle? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, kitchen. Yep. Looks is, like rain. Looks like rain. Yeah. Go ahead. Kit okay. Kitchen's El been steady. Okay. Yep. Um, I think RJ will have the lead, but we'll watch in the end of like second. And I'm going to put Wait a second. Okay. I'm going to put, uh, uh, Oh, oh, old man Nicoletti. I think Phil. he's gonna, he he's he's hmm. due one. He's, so he, where do you have Jordan Smith finishing? Interchange him or uh, uh, him or uh, RJ will be second. Okay. Either one. Yeah. But one I, of one of those would be outside the podium. Yeah. All right, uh, Jeremy. This is tough. Is Shimoda pretty good in the mud? I mean, yeah. He's, I mean, he's. I mean, he's right. I'm gonna go on the limb here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go Levi Kitchen, Shimoda, and. Um, I guess I'll go RJ. All right. Guys, send us your top five. Send them before. Send them by Friday. MotoXPodShow at gmail.com. Want to get your emails. And even if you have just questions, comments, topic you want us to talk about. I actually had a, a random top, an email that I wanted to talk about. We'll, we'll try to hit it next week. Just to give you a heads up what Were it is. Were any of us close this week? Uh, No, I don't think so. Let me go back. No. How, how yeah. did we not pick Jet? <laughs> I did actually pick Jet, but then I think I, I was off. Yeah, I picked Jet. I went Jet, Kenny, Cooper Webb. That was pretty close. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, Scotty, you picked Cooper Webb, Jet, e Eli. I was off. Yep. TJ said Eli, Jet, Cooper Webb, and then uh, Jeremy wasn't on the show. So, yeah, I was somewhat close. But anyway, MotoXPodShow at gmail.com. I got an email from somebody that was, what is something you have anxiety over? Like, whether... <laughs> Like, uh, I have a couple, so, like, that stress you out or whatever. We'll try to t hit that next week. I, that's just kind of an off topic. Could have to do with moto. But could have to do with life. I like stuff like that. The, so. My list would be shorter. Um, okay. to, to do not things that didn't cause you. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, motoxpotshow at gmail.com. Uh, anything else before we wrap this thing up? Don't forget, giveahand.com for Alistair Dickert. Go support if you can. Um, anything else? Guys, before we start closing this out. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Thanks for the YouTube chat for hanging in there yep. with us the last few Love weeks. We I know no, it's been you know rough. What? New high. No, no audio issues tonight. Yeah, we, is. we like, unless something happens in the last 30 seconds, it's, uh, I, I it's think funny. the laptop fixed it. It's funny though. The, when, when there is issues, it's all, it's all you hear about. And like there was from the, uh, the dark side, not paying his internet bill to having too much dirty, dirty pictures on there and <laughs> all this. And then this week when it works perfectly, nobody says a word. So, uh, <laughs> glad that we've gotten that fixed. Thank you to you guys for hanging in there. And for those of y'all that listen to us, um, post haste on Spotify or other, whatever other platform you used to do. If you ever have a chance, check us out on YouTube. We have fun in the chats. Um, it, it's, yep. a, it's a cool experience and you get to see dark sides, uh, pretty face on, on YouTube. So. It's off. It's awfully pretty. <laughs> All right. I want to thank Corey Steed, Brandon Hart Raff, Drew Adams. I want to thank Race Tech and Yamaha Motorsports for for, for P, Jesus for being the presenting sponsors. I want to thank Guts Racing, FXR, X Brand Goggles, Pro X, EVS Protection, Troll Training, Evans Coolant, Blood Lubricants, Barnett Clutches. Guys, next week I'll be in California. Not sure what the show is going to look like. We'll let you know. Round. <laughs>